advise that. I might let them hear this recording. I've kept the negative of the prints. It was such a great pleasure that now you're coming back to pay me. You pig! Undress. Better take her home. I'll see what I can find out. You stop this or I'll bring in the police, you hear? I want to know who shot him. He thinks I have those diamonds. He says he'll kill me. It might have been it. How amazing you should care when this stupid bitch nearly murdered the man who was keeping us. But I only heard footsteps, I tell you. A woman's. It was a woman's. Yes, yes, y'all, it's going down right now. Episode 244 of the Triple Shots and Moons and Horror Podcast is coming at you live and direct with the homies, JP and Mr. Saucedo. And of course, I'd be your host, the M-O-O-D to the Z, representing Gia. What's going on, fools? Tyler, did you change your name on Letterboxd to Saucedo? Yes. <laughs> Honestly, so this is why I noticed somebody else changed. Oh, you're actually life. not joking. No, I no. swear to God. So this is my my first and last name was always my letterbox name, and I never even like liked that. I didn't. I didn't know you could change it for literally years. Oh. Huh. And then I noticed somebody else changed their letterbox. I was like, you can do that, and I just went and edited my first and last name and just changed. So then I was like, what do I want to change it to? And that's just like the first thing that came to mind. So how so did you say? Me? How did how did you spell Sasado? Uh, S A S A D O. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I, I literally have it written down as like sauce S A U C E S A D O <laughs> sauce A-D-O, like how it sounds. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Cause I mean, really like it's a word I've never seen before. So like when you spell it, you know, like when you've never really seen a word and you go to spell it, you're like, yeah, you spell it? like it just doesn't look right. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, yeah man. Episode 244 week two here on the Italian horror month um we got luciano or coley man yeah for weak dukes and uh yeah so y- have you guys seen any of these films before i i don't remember these are I, this is the only guy where i've seen all three. Oh yeah, all three yeah that's right i also had all seen all three of these mm-hmm. but it was like long enough where like everything was close to a fresh watch like i remembered like the scores and a little bit but yeah it's not really good not really yeah much. i think it was on it th- i literally think it was 2016 when i watch wh- when i watched these i think i think i'm pretty sure that i because like when i was re-adding these into letterbox like um it's shown that i'd watch them all, but i'm pretty sure i did like a triple feature last year during italian horror month of these three films like huh. it was either last year or the year before i can't remember i was just watching a bunch of your coley films and stuff like that so but, i did uh, watch um uh photos um more recently the other two i watched back when that arrow box set came out and that was 2016. <laughs> yeah so i must have watched them back then too but that was pre letterbox for me so i've obviously watched after 2018 i think is when i signed up for letterbox so yeah these two of them though the death walks ones those i watched pre letterbox and i signed up for that in 2021 yeah on january 1st exactly I, <laughs> honestly dude like I fucking love Letterboxd, man. I, I, it came out of nowhere, and like now I feel like anybody who's a film fan needs to have it. It's just such an insane resource. Even if like you're not into like logging all this stuff, I think it's great. I like seeing like my statistics and stuff. Yeah, like, but it's just you, it's such a tremendous resource for you to find movies you would have just never found about otherwise. Yeah, man, yeah. I do it sometimes. Like I, the other day, I was I clicked, I typed in Franco Nero's name because I I had like. 15 or 16 films watched by him. And I was like, what else do I have in my collection that Nero's in? Like, you know, sometimes you just can't remember everything, right? And I'm yeah. going through his filmography and he's been in like fucking 200 and something movies, but there's yeah. a ton of movies that I own that he's in. And I was like, oh shit, he was in that. I'm like, oh, what the fuck? And it's it was like just- some of those too, you see, it's like, oh, this is, I've never heard of this movie. Oh, this sounds cool. It's 83 minutes long. And then you just set like what your services are. Yeah. And like, then you're like, oh, look, it's on Prime for free. Yeah. It's I just, love it. Such an I- insane outreach. 
yeah, I love the stats too, man. Like looking on like all the films I've watched from certain directors and like, you know, certain, yeah. um, obviously actors and stuff like that. Like I think Christopher Lee and, and, uh, Vincent Price and fucking are like my top guys. Like I've watched 30 something films from each of those guys and shit like that. It's just, it's ridiculous, but yeah. And, and it's also fun to like make lists and stuff like for yeah. yourself or for other things well, i do it for all of our prep too like all the top 10 shows that we prep for you know whether you know i i, I have for the current year obviously 2023 all my watches and then of course i'm prepping for 2011 right now so i've got that play or that list and i that's pretty much all i do for lists like i've made a bunch of other lists before but i've deleted and i was just fucking around making some fun like my top 10 favorite bruce willis films or some shit like that <laughs> I, yeah, I, I do like lists for um like chris like just just lists that i can reference easy like when it like uh christmas horror and halloween horror and stuff like that just mm. to be able to like yeah i have like occasion I... lists like if i do like a challenge or something and like a bunch of private lists just for like referencing right yeah speaking yeah. of uh lists and 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 top 10 prep and stuff i actually watched four 2011 movies this week you know what's funny i was like watching a ton of italian films again and i i slipped into 2011 because i just got the blu-ray for vile and that, okay. that's a that, that's an interesting one because like i actually thought i owned the dvd and i thought i'd seen it before so it turns out nor did i i didn't own the dvd nor had i ever seen the fucking movie before so like i'm losing my shit in my old age man like i just don't even know what's going on well it's like some anymore. of these movies that like so came weird. out like 10 years ago yeah you watched around when they came out especially like because back then too like i was more concerned about like watching the best movies of the year right so like i was always like watching these random movies and a lot of them like from that long ago just blend together yeah like yeah. It, it, it just seemed like a title that i would own given the premise you know it's like it's it, it's got a really nasty premise to it but it just Dude, seemed like is that like, the one with uh melissa joan hart in it no no okay so it's I'm got a bunch of people in it movie. i don't recognize like anybody in the film but it's got this yeah. really crazy basically a bunch of people are kind of abducted and they all wake up in this basement and they're forced to basically like torture each other but you can't kill them because what they're doing they're all hooked up to this um yeah I this remember have, like that's... serotonin yeah like, it's like it's, it's, it's creating a drug they're basically drug dealers that need this drug from these people and it's only created through like you know pain and suffering and stuff like that it's like adrenaline whatever yeah and it, it's kind of a nasty premise and, and the movie isn't like as gory and nasty as i thought it was going to be it's got a, kind of a downbeat ending to it but it wasn't bad yeah. like the i really like the premise of it it's kind of it's kind of neat but um it's just one of those fucking films i literally thought i owned and saw and i it, it just it turned out i'd never seen it before and didn't own it it was the weirdest shit and i was like how odd is that that vile gets its first bl first blu-ray release in the year that we're prepping for 2011 i'm like oh shit yeah. mvd's releasing so i'm like that's fucking so bizarre right like out of all movies like actually we're getting some old like kind of indie films on blu-ray this year that i never well i was hoping that we're gonna get but like dead girl just came out um, that girl came out on blu-ray yeah from unearth man they put it out finally oh, because shit. i fucking love that one? movie where they Me like too. found the corpse in the basement yeah yeah, yeah and then they I have start a i have they make it a sex that, toy that i got like uh, i have a blu-ray that i bought like a long time ago oh crazy yeah so anyways yeah it finally came out and i was like oh that's amazing because that that's one of those indie films that i love from that era that just didn't have a like a blu-ray and maybe it probably had a european one or whatever but but yeah so i was yeah, happy to I'm see that one come that's out that's like it is uh the that uh dead girl i haven't seen that in so long but mm -hmm. i remember i remember watching that on netflix like years it's a and years fucked ago up movie and like, Yo, dude it's not up. only it's not only a fucked up premise man it's absolutely disgusting like uh, the effects yeah. in it are just gross man it, it literally makes my fucking stomach turn when i watch like <laughs> i'd see i've seen it a few times and i'm like oh my god like and you know under does a really good job with their blu-rays too so i'm like man this is going to be really nasty and high def man <laughs> <laughs> yeah well i'm actually glad to hear that because um terror vision uh was asking a while back like titles that people would like to see released and stuff and i said that i think like the right now the most untouched era is like the start of the blu-ray era but still a lot of titles were on dvd Right. so like a lot like think think honestly like 2011 era right like uh 
you got stuff like the Dimension Extreme titles. I was gonna bring up those. The, yeah, and the you eight got films like to die for the the eight some of the eight films to die for. You got um the like bloody disgusting selects titles. There's a few good ones in yeah. that that uh line, but just stuff that and and stuff that came direct to video back then. There's a lot of it that's not on any type of Blu-ray. Which, yeah. So yeah. I think that's like right now. I I I, w- I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing more of that era titles coming out because we've dug so much into the 70s and 80s and 90s and even 2000s to a lesser extent. But the the weird like cross between like modern time and pre uh, Blu-ray is like I know it's like that era like from like 2006, seven, eight and stuff like it's. It seems yeah. like it's so modern, but like when you yeah. think about it, like 2005, six, like when Blu-rays were first popping out and shit like that, you know, it's like, it's 18 fucking years ago, bro. Yeah. yeah. Like, like, it's even not if really we that just modern. Say tw- even if we just say like 2010, like would yeah. you have questioned it in 2010, if like you were getting something that came out in 1997? Yeah. No. Exactly. It's like, it's the same thing. It's It's yeah. exactly the same thing. Yeah. That's crazy it's it's interesting though because like what just watching these 2011 movies and i haven't watched very many many so far but i'm definitely getting certain vibes <laughs> for the for the era um and it's it, and like all of these all the movies that i watched i think the the, the none of them had a blue release or oh, hobo with a shotgun did yeah, yeah. but yeah there, there's a lot of movies from 2011 that do have blu-rays i just some of them i don't have them you know what i mean but i have watched quite a few blu-rays like like i'm i'm pretty sure like kill list has a blu-ray that i i just watched my dvd you know shit like that i'm pretty sure detention has one and um, yeah I there's watched, definitely i've some. watched quite a few like chop i would love to see see chop is one of those bloody disgusting titles that yeah. i believe doesn't have a blu-ray and it's a it would be a great one on blu-ray man it's yeah fun. off of the master list you sent like when we first got selected, I think I owned around 25 to 30 of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Man, I, I cannot I believe how many movies from 2011 I own. Like I, like I, I, I was going through this list and making this shit. And I, I think there was like 130 or 140 titles that I had in my collection from 2011. That's insane. I, only I know. have like 16. Like when like some of the eight. titles, man, are, you know, I'm probably not even going to watch because I mean, it's pretty fucking pointless. But to yeah. be honest, like I, I kind of separated, like, here's what I'm, I want to get to these ones. I might, and then these ones right here, I'm like, no, I'm not fucking watching, rewatching some of the, that shit right there. <laughs> yeah. Some so, of the stuff I plan on rewatching, I'm like, ugh, not. But honestly, dude, like, man, my, my, my like list of what I want to get back to or first time. So there's a few first time, a lot of the stuff I've, I've watched before. Um, and then the ones that are kind of in the maybe list, it's, it's a lot of, it's like about a hundred titles, man. I'm like, this is actually not, a, it's not bad. Like there's a lot of fun. Th- there's a lot of shit from this year that I actually enjoy it. And it's such a mixed bag of films. Like there's films all over the place. There's found footage films. There's like these torture films. He's like, there's all different types of films. Like one type of subgenre didn't like overrule the whole fucking year. Like to be honest, like I've watched, what do I got here? 26 films and I've only watched one um maybe like two maybe three movies that have like zombies and shit in them you know like there there was certain years in that era that it was just like flooded you know with either found footage films or like zombie films and shit but i don't know i feel yeah. like it's, it's kind of a mixed bag right now man like there's a whole pile of like psychological type films like alice kills and you know yeah. shit like lovely molly and shit like there's a whole pile of different types like the orphan killer straight up slasher film um yeah i'm actually i, I i'm so far i've like done indie stuff like i did uh the task which was a uh, after dark title yeah yeah um, i know that one yeah 247 degrees fahrenheit which i've seen before as well i actually thought it, okay so this, that's funny that you bring that up because i just got the blu-ray in the other day it's a movie i thought i owned so i went to go grab the dvd and i was like i don't fucking own this <laughs> like what the <laughs> hell because i've, I've seen it before and that premise of that movie i remember watching it probably around the time it came out and it scared me dude i was like that is a fucking scary premise mm-hmm. man like that shit, yeah. if that effort actually happened to you man you'd be it'd be fucking terrifying man terrifying yeah I, i've seen it before it's yeah. it's it's decent yeah um and then i did husk which is another after dark one uh is it the scarecrow one is it yeah, the the scarecrow one. one yeah yeah yep 
Uh, and then I did Madison County, which is like sort of a TCM great value type mm-hmm. thing. It's 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 um, not a bad movie. I feel like that it's movie not been it's a lot not. better, but yeah. And then I did uh, a movie called Fifty One, which is another After Dark one. Yeah, yeah I remember that one. And I then, remember that one being uh, decent, decent. Yeah, it actually was kind of funny. It yeah. wasn't bad. And uh, then I did Hobo with a Shotgun. So oh, six, nice. I guess I did. Yeah, for I did Hobo with a Shotgun and like probably like october like september so i think i'm just gonna count that mm-hmm. yeah. yeah well i did that actually with um with zombie apocalypse like i i had picked up the blu-ray i think i found the blu-ray for like four bucks and i th- i'm pretty sure i'd seen it before I'm, I, I wasn't sure i i put that i didn't because when i was watching i, was like, I don't really remember this but i kind of remembered it but i'd watch it a couple months before the 2011 got picked on the ramonizer and i was like ah fuck i'm gonna i'm gonna put that in my thing because i just fucking watched it but zombie i pretty much count anything that i watched in the last like calendar year there's some i have watched in the last calendar year i'm gonna wait till closer to showtime because i kind of want to and like it it happens to be stuff anyway that i think is like likely to be near like the top of my list yeah yeah like I thought zombie, yeah. it was actually quite fun for like one of those 2011 films with a little bit of CG, a lot of more and more practical effects and stuff. I don't like that, even think I know what that movie is. It's, it's got Ving Rhames in it. It's got Tara Manning in it. It's got some faces that you recognize and shit, but it's, it's actually really fun. It's just your typical, you know, survivor zombie apocalypse type thing where the world is pretty much gone to shit and there's not too many survivors around and they're just trying to survive in this apocalypse. And, you know, it's pretty standard stuff, but it's actually pretty decent. I didn't mind it. Like for, I pretty fucking sure it's in a silent film. Like I'm pretty sure it is. Um, hmm. I don't know. I'd have to look. It probably is. But I noticed not- there's a ton that like I saw like ten years ago, and I've never seen since then. Right. Yeah, I, I had like 63 logged on my just. That's from, a like, lot. I only years. had like yeah, like 30 something, but yeah, 63 is a lot. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah. like I, I mean, I actually was watching a lot of the newer stuff that was coming out at this time too, like uh, even some of the indie stuff, like Cadaver Christmas and. Yeah, um, I saw that. This was like right around when I started popping into like kind of like the internet online horror community. Yeah, yeah, I, I like. Mind, uh, I don't mind the some though, fun man. movies though, man. Like, I can't wait to revisit Attack the Block. Like, I love that one. Yeah, man, that's that, one I haven't seen. I tried to watch it the other night because I know it was on Prime when we started. And they took it off of Prime. So it's like, uh, it so has a uh, very thick accents, but it's it's really fun movie, man. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. was like, I like yeah. that I had that um the guy from the new Star Wars like as a young man in it. That was kind of cool, like John mm-hmm. Boyega or it. something. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, that's one I'm looking forward to rewatching too. I haven't seen it probably around the time it came out, so yeah, Remember, I've I, seen it a handful of times, but I, it's always like I feel a, like it got reviewed on this show, like not as a group review, but maybe you talked about it. I or probably something. reviewed it. Yeah, probably. I mean, fuck, man, we've reviewed thousands of literally. Yeah, you thousands used to of films just like you. go over like everything you watched. <laughs> Like, yeah. Well, yeah we used to do the what we watch thing right and just do kind of yeah. like short like little mini reviews just kind of like they weren't yeah. like every once in a while one of us would end up with like a 15 minute fucking segment or something like that it was just like holy yeah. shit what yeah, just I happened remember, there? I you would always outpace everyone <laughs> <laughs> i remember there was one movie that i ended up talking for like i swear it was like 20 minutes i'm like what the fuck just happened because it's usually like <laughs> quick little like four or five minute reviews and then we move on to the next one and i was like what the hell does happen here yeah but yeah so um you guys watch any italian films this week I watched yeah, a bunch uh, of spaghetti westerns. Yeah. I did um nice. New York Ripper. Oh, um, I actually have it sitting on my table. It's still in the wrapper. I haven't watched the 4K yet. And uh yeah, I got to sit on my table right now actually. Yeah, I actually didn't even watch the 4K, but I have watched the 4K already. Right. Before, but I just threw it on on Shutter or something. Um and then I watched uh Zombie and the bird with the crystal plumage and Oof. anthropopagus 2. man all the classics and then anthropopagus 2. <laughs> yeah from this year <laughs> right how is that it's like uh <laughs> there was some like good gore in it it's, so it's a sequel to anthropopagus 2000 I like don't the, really the, like no because that i know that movie was made as like a dedication to diamato and that was like a more recent one, like the Anthropophagus 2000. It's pretty low budget, almost like video kind of thing. Um, I'm assuming this is what that is. I don't know if it's the same director or not, but yeah, I didn't mind that one though. I think Masker Video put it out or somebody, somebody put it out. I can't remember. It wasn't like a bad time killer, you know, it was, yeah. uh, it had some gore and stuff. It acting wasn't the greatest. <laughs> it was just, yeah. you know, it kind of a weird 
thing to make really right i watched a couple i i checked out uh the weapon the hour and the motive it was one of the releases from the uh the black giallo box set that was released uh from arrow and i picked up that one because i won't pick up any of the other ones because they're all re-releases i already own everything but this particular box set actually was like all films they hadn't released which is kind of random that they had one of these sets where it was stuff that they hadn't released before and then all I know the that kind of pisses you off because it's almost like it almost is like trying to bait you into picking up the other no, ones just so exactly you have what the it cool is. the cool like because they are cool been, boxes. If I didn't own some of those films already, I'd be like, oh yeah, these are. I've awesome. actually been asked a couple times why I wasn't picking up those boxes. I'm like, oh, I'm sure I can pick those up. And I'm like, well, it's because I own everything the individually releases. I'm like, I'm not buying all these re-releases just for the yeah. box. I they should sell the box, dude. I know they should, well, they should remember, sell the box. Vinegar, remember, I said that years and years ago. We talked about this on the podcast. I mean, I said that. I said, well, I don't understand why. You know, if you're going to release a bunch of movies that you could compile into a box, that why these companies don't come up and you know just sell an empty box? And Vinegar Syndrome did it with the fucking the Rudy Ray Moore box and uh, i owned all the, the movies yeah. and then i bought the empty box to make the box and i was like this is fucking fantastic there was I'm like, they, i they, think they, i think they did three of those yeah uh, i wish they would they just like the sell the, sh- the slip covers like separate too honestly yeah so I'm yes so, I, I i hate slip i hate i hate what became of slip covers <laughs> me too but like i'm so guilty like i need the slip cover ah! i i care less and less the more time I it goes have. on the only ones i care about are the vestron ones because they look cool on the shelf and i have them all like i have so many 88 films slip covers like from the italian line and and um you know the jackie chan films and like the you know the category three film like just a lot of releases from 88 films but with the they don't match up and it's you know i'm very um it, it's got to be it's got to look the same for me like uh, the Italian collection on the on the shelf just can't have a random slipcover in there, so I took them all off. I have literally got stacks and stacks of fucking um, slipcovers. I should just, I I, the, I could probably make a fucking fortune off these things just selling slipcovers because yeah, I've looked on I am. some people. I've thought about like, that twenty bucks life. for slipcovers. I'm like, what the fuck? I've thought about that with some of the old screen factories I have that are like super out of print now. Yeah, and I have like yeah, like I was looking at my oh, shelf dude, I can, I could buy I, a whole other collection with slipcovers selling, man. I have so many; it's ridiculous. I, I have Sleepaway Camp two and three yeah. sealed; they're still sealed on the shelf. Yeah, oh, and wow. and I I looked and used Sleepaway Camp two and three with the the slipcovers go for like two hundred dollars. So, so I we don't d- even know what That's you absurd. would go for. I, I think we talked about this before, and like it's so funny to me because. The Sleepaway Camp two and three slipcover, that artwork is so ugly. <laughs> like, yeah, the faces are so nasty on them, man. It's just hilarious. It kind of so grew much on me over the years. I think they look goofy. On my walls. I think they look yeah, goofy they in a do. bad way. They do, but the mo- but the movie's kind of goofy too. Oh, dude, the I third love- one doesn't bother me, but like the look on her face in the second one, I've never been a fan yeah, of the that. Se- the second one looks it's off. like off. I love the third movie though, man. Th- that that movie is so much fun. Like, dude, I love that third movie. Second one's better than third. It's probably better, but I, I prefer the third one. We've talked about this before. I, I, I probably even rated three higher than two kind of thing. I, I think the, fun. the funny thing is, is like, I've always felt like the third one just feels like the leftovers from part two. Yeah, but I like the feel of it because it's so cheap <laughs> and ridiculous. It's, I don't know. It's something about it, man. And it's like the, it's like the corny you know the uncopy like the music that because they couldn't use copyrighted music right so they'd have like these beats and it's just like a kick in a in a fucking hi-hat and shit and you're just like the fuck it's so corny so <laughs> fucking corny but you know i watched a movie called the weapon the hour and the motive um from that box set and uh e- yeah it wasn't very good <laughs> <laughs> to be on 1972 so i didn't see this one when we prepped for 72. it obviously didn't have the release back probably then it was, was probably it was very then. obscure this was a very obscure one the transfer is fantastic on it it just kind of felt flat it was pretty standard stuff and uh but i rewatched killer crocodile one and two which are just the fucking you know what thing. i i still have those sealed i've never opened that seven release oh i, I've should, got the- I should pop those in <laughs> Yeah, I've got the 88 box set. Um, oh, okay. They come separately in a hard box, and it's really nice. So I never picked up the separate one, but th- there's so much fun, man. I've seen them multiple times. They're just, <laughs> I just love the look of the crocodile. Like, it's fucking, they're ginormous, dude. And it's cool, man, because the second film, Killer Crocodile 2, was actually directed by, oh, fuck, what's the guy's name? I can't remember now. But he's actually, like, an effects artist. So the, the crocodile in part two is, like, 
bigger and more badass and shit it's awesome it's pretty cool but some fun ass parts and it's cool too because like the two main characters actually like are in both films very typical italian stuff but you know play the same game. it's just cool to see them kind of carry over and actually have like continuity and stuff it's pretty funny but yeah it's pretty much all i watched this week for italian films i didn't really watch a lot of films was super busy uh besides the three for this show and vile was like the only other show movie i even watched this week so I've yeah, a lot of sports I, man a lot of a lot of like fucking just tons of sports <laughs> this week man so much so yeah I caught a little bit of uh a penguin game and then I always wa- I always watch Thursday night football usually yeah um but I've been just busy as hell like at work doing like I'm so bad at morning shifts bro when I have to do mornings <laughs> <laughs> i'm just dead i literally sleep the whole day afterwards after i'm off work because I, i'm just like you get no sleep the night before right and then you got yeah work, dude man. no like i'll literally like be I'll, I'll wake up at like 9 p.m or something and then i'll stay up all night and go to work and it's like horrible but <laughs> I, I i'm i've always been just i'm very well you know I, i've i'm always been like a really nighttime person and especially since most of the time my job like kind of reflects that so, but, yeah. so it's really jarring right put a dollar in the jar and jar put a dollar in the jar yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a it's really jarring when i uh switch the shift up for right. whatever reason so i was dragging all week this week uh struggling to to f- stay awake and find time but i ended up watching more movies than i've been watching actually in, in the week so oddly enough right yeah so, that's weird actually but yeah i'm actually gonna start getting cracking on these 2011 films in between i'll, I'll, I'll definitely throw in some more italian movies too i kind of yeah. been just hitting my favorites right yeah i'm trying to yeah. like i said like i said before i'm trying to knock off some of the films i haven't watched out of those box sets and stuff so it's been going been i'm a lot shooting of- for like 50. Wow, 2011. Oh, for 11. No, for no, for like, um, like Italian genre films this month. Oh shit! Oh fuck you! Yeah. You're a go getter, man. <laughs> well, I I had a good. I had the best week I've had in a while. I was like in kind of like a rut. In addition to these three, I watched the Dollars trilogy. I watched Django. I watched Death Rides a Horse, and I watched The Lizard and Women's Skin. Wow! And I'm gonna try to watch at least another one or two tonight. Just like you know, what? Classics, I have man. that Arrow did Django. 4k that came out i've never watched that maybe i'll do that so good it's only like 90 minutes too yeah Django's fucking awesome man yeah speaking yeah, of severin have... good i was gonna say speaking of severin man did you guys catch the uh the first four black friday announcements i saw yeah. cemetery man holy I... fuck dude i had so many people message me after cemetery man got announced like holy fuck cemetery because everyone's like we just thought of you right away because everyone knows cemetery man's like one of my all-time favorites but i was like finally yeah. like an ultimate edition yeah finally shit, you're gonna pay like 80 dollars for it probably i know man because oh, severin is listen I, dude I, I love severin as much as the next guy but they are fucking re ridiculous dude they are out to lunch with their prices dude it's so crazy like man i i so i w- i wanted to grab that bad biology like three dude, days 4k whatever 40 it was like, fucking dollars dude well for it was like 65 yeah. bucks and i'm like what the f-? i'm like this is bad fuck. that that costs more for the blu-ray than it costs to make the fucking movie dude yeah, I, I literally was it's funny you bring that one up because that's the same one that like sent me over the edge because like i like bad biology it's yeah, not a great movie it's, it's Henry Lauder's worst movie probably it's pretty fun but yeah. it's not like a cult classic like basket case or bra- brain damage yeah and you know like i looked at it and i, I was thinking this is going to be like a budget t- title like you know 20 25 dollars or something these days is a budget title and it's like 40 some bucks and i'm like you gotta be dude 40 dollars for bad biology bro that's that's not that's unfair i think what i'm gonna end up doing like i haven't grabbed a whole severn package forever because there's always titles in there i don't really care about and then it's just it's really expensive and shit but with this one i think to kind of keep the cost down i might actually end up just grabbing the i mean they've only announced the first four or eight but so far i mean it was cemetery man uh the church another three disc which is you know i already have a blu-ray of the church i actually have a blu-ray of cemetery man i got that shameless one but it the yeah, i got that too the transfer is not the greatest on it but i imagine severance is gonna be amazing and then they really then they announced a couple others i think there was another italian film and like a, a like a tv italian film or some shit like that i was like shit and then there's like an older 60s film and stuff but so far i mean their announcements have been pretty strong for myself so 
given what the next the, four yeah, are, I'll are, consider it. They are good announcements, but like just based on la- I, like last year, I ended up just skipping the wholesale because I was like, dude, these prices are just like, yeah, insane. I didn't grab I anything. Can't, I can't yeah, justify I it right skipped now. The, the summer sale. I skipped it. I was just, I got, so, I, there was a bunch of stuff I want. Some of it wasn't even on sale and there was some stuff I mildly wanted, but it was still like 25 bucks. And I was just, I just like, fuck, I was, fuck that. I'm just not. I know Severin is gone out of control man with the prices like i wanted like it's the psychic tough, and like i was interested in some of those other 4ks like bad biologies when i haven't seen bad biology but i'm interested in like you know just picking up a boutique 4k of it yeah and like uh, even like the psychic that i really like and i just i could not justify yeah i wasn't gonna grab i just those. i've got a couple i've got the movie multiple times i'm like yeah fuck i, I don't need another one but i do have it on good authority from someone that i know that has industry connections that the um, the cemetery for cemetery man 4k what shouldn't be more than like what they had them like 55 dollars, which still sucks but like i feel a lot less bad about buying, spending 55 dollars on like the ultimate cemetery man edition than i do like buying bad biology for 45 dollars. yeah <laughs> right it's still a bit much for me like just because i'm kind of i'm kind of jaded with with severin right now just because like I had been doing the package for the, you know, black halfway to black or no, actually black Friday sale. Mm -hmm. And last year it was just like, the value was just like insanely bad for like, cause obviously you got vinegar syndrome doing stuff. You got Mm -hmm. everybody doing shit. And to me, whenever I could get like four titles for the same price as I get two titles at Severin, I just was like, I guess I'm not doing Severin this year. And I haven't, I don't think I've bought a single Severin this year. I think I've, I bought three at Wasteland for the three I, for I one. I bought a few. Yeah. I don't know. They're just, I, I can't, I can't justify it right now. I mean, I've been uh, slowing down a little bit on buying in general, uh, just cause I have so much that I haven't watched. And yeah, um, that's how they're I just, right there's now, so too. much that comes out and it's, and the prices have just been, you know, in it's doubled since I, Oh, big since time. we started this show you know yeah. <laughs> like stuff is doubled like i remember you used to be able to get a scream factory for like like a new like s- collector's edition scream factory for like 18 bucks yep, yeah and, and exactly remember that. the price hike went from like 18 to like 30 like just overnight yeah. you're like what the fuck it's like 18 not, then the, it was 27 then it was like 34 yeah the non-collector's edition stuff was like 10 to 12 dollars yep, i remember that that's what that's scream factories who really wrote me in because i thought like their collector's editions were like the coolest things i'd ever seen and i remember when those when i i started getting into those i probably was collecting like eight nine months and i said i'm just not buying dvds anymore i'm just gonna like buy this stuff and that's how i like kind of like discover the whole like online circle and collecting mm-hmm. yeah but yeah, I remember that well. They were like eight. I would. I had a list, and I like would buy the cheapest one every week. Like once a week, I bet <laughs> like when it was so. They start. I remember they started at like eighteen, and the most expensive ones were like twenty five. But you're right about the non ones. I forgot about some of the non ones. You could get new for like twelve ninety nine. I remember buying like Town at Dreaded Sundown for like twelve bucks, dude. Yeah, mm-hmm. like stuff like that. <laughs> like they were like, yeah, it's a it cool movie. Like we don't expect everyone to buy it, but. And didn't yeah. it come with the evictors as a bonus film on there too? Yeah, I came with yeah, that. I remember yeah. it was like, oh, well, if it comes with another movie, oh, Jessica Harper's in this movie. Like, that, that, that was the thing about Screen Factor used to drive me nuts though, too, because I remember when people were like, why didn't the evictors get a, a single release, you know? And they said, oh, I can't remember the excuse. It was something about the artwork and stuff, even though they had like a little picture of the actual artwork on the back for the evictors and stuff like that. And I was like, okay. Yeah. And they had literally. The too. Yeah, they had literally said like, yeah, we're never going to do a solo release for it because we we can't do it, whatever. And then it was like years later, the Evictors comes out solo. It just came out of nowhere. And I'm like, what the fuck is like that shit always used yeah, to bug the, me. Now. I, I hate I, I don't I'm not a big fan of the like the cheap re- re-release. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I don't really pick up pick those up. Yeah, I'm lo- Looking at it, I don't. It was right behind me, so I'm looking at it right now. If you open up the actual edition of it, there's like a whole ass poster of the Evictors and like screen caps from the movie. Yeah, <laughs> I wish there was, um, like, I wish it was like it was in, in in back in the day, and and you could get a lot of stuff for a fair price. These days, I pretty much have been just doing Vinegar Syndrome and like the odd. T- 
title here and there. Like I did, I did pre-order the Coffin Joe box set because I just think that is a really cool set. Mm-hmm. Um, and there are certain things that are like kind of must-haves for me. Like that was one, the Ilsa set that's coming from Kino is one that I'll I'll make sure to get. But uh, mm-hmm. it's like there's just so many companies out there right now that, and, and I want, and it's, it, I do want all this stuff. It's just like you got to make choices at this point because you yeah. can't keep up with the, with these companies. Like I, I'm, like I, I did the subscription to TerraVision. I think I did it twice now, and I like those releases a lot. But like again, that's that's a company that is you know you're spending almost a hundred dollars a month on their titles or something you know i don't know how much it actually is but you know and then you factor in that with vinegar syndrome it's just too much to keep up with but it's a good problem to have i guess because that just means there's a lot of options it's fucking nuts dude like it's so crazy like i find myself like all the time i'm like checking out the new cauldron releases mondo fucking severin vinegar syndrome like it's just constant man i'm like fuck there's so many companies like i buy so much shit from like 88 i collect the italian line you know it's like it's just so much dude it's so fucking <laughs> yeah it's hard it's hard to get you know it's what, hard honest, to get everything like, you want what's killing me more about like releases that like i just don't see myself ever keeping up with now is just like the box the amount of box sets that come out now man i really need to do my new update because i, I must have, i'm not even joking 25 box sets man <laughs> i like, like love these, i'm like, out of control with my box i i'm, I'm I, I love box sets man that's like always been my thing yeah so like when they come out i'm just like bam i gotta get that shit man it's like but there's so many cool ones that have been coming out like do you like, have these um shot scope sets from arrow i got both of them yeah and i actually yeah. have the first three screen or shout factory shaw brother sets and i have the fourth one on pre-order too but they, they they announced the first one and then they announced like two three and four like right away i'm like what the yeah. fuck that's like, where i'm so- getting caught up like i love these like arrow ones i'm almost done i watched all uh, the first one i'm like halfway done so with much the second fun. one i love those and i want to like get to go into the shout factory ones but there's like four of them and they're like yeah i don't know it just like it seems like i'm never getting caught up with these I know it's it's so much shit man it's like it's like uh Kino with their their film noir sets like they, you know they released a few of them and then it was like oh here's volume 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 50 I'm like what the fuck and I love film yeah. noir so like I ended up I have like 15 box sets of fucking film noir it's ridiculous it's absolutely out to fucking lunch man <laughs> I, I love the I love those but like I come to the point where it's like I I really like noirs but Something I didn't realize until I started getting past all like the most popular noirs that there's a lot of shitty noirs. Oh, of <laughs> course, of course. But I, I mean, most of the ones I've seen from Kino and stuff have been pretty decent. I mean, they're not all like top shelf ones and shit, but yeah. at least it's Kino and the transfers are good and like you're getting quality. Yeah. So I, I mean, I can, most and they're not expensive. Kino, I think no, they're not. Yeah, those, cheap. those noir sets are fair. Well, yeah, Kino in general is the most like, like aff- affordable company there is yeah and they the thing about kino that blows my mind man is the wide range of shit that they release dude like it's just phenomenal to me man like i love it i love it man yeah i got a ton of noirs from um and a ton of like random westerns i still haven't made my way through all these remember that last four for 44 sale from warner brothers yeah Mm -hmm. they're like this is the last time we're doing this i spent so much money i literally like bought the catalog Dude, I, I, bought sales. 20, sales. I bought 20 titles too thinking it was gonna be the last one and i'm like yeah. and they just kept releasing shit i'm like what the fuck just happened man well, i mean like the, it was their they last still release though. stuff but they don't do the four for four yeah 44 anymore no, and like no. i literally bought like I, I bought like 60 like 70 movies yeah everything and like there's so many good noirs and westerns i found i'm still working my way through like that big yeah. box i part predominantly grab most of the horror um uh, titles on the blu-rays and shit like that that i didn't have yeah and that was pretty much what i grabbed so but i grabbed quite a bit because for something like the warner up here was so expensive so like even with the deal and the conversion stuff was way fucking cheaper for me to buy them it actually worked out pretty well if you didn't yeah. huge quantities so it wasn't too bad but yeah but yeah kino's insane i love their sales i probably do the most <laughs> volume with them now it seems like they always have a sale going on every time you go to the website it's like they got a bunch they of do like sale. Four a year, and there should be one more. It'll either be this month or in December. I think it's in December usually. Yeah, they don't do Black Friday. No, they don't do Black Friday. They do Shocktober, so it's just like a month uh, beforehand, right? 
and then they do like either March Madness or spring cleaning, and then they do like one around like Memorial Day or like Fourth of July or something. Well, it's smart not to do the black because you got to think about it. Like, it's nice that Severin doesn't do like a halfway to Black Friday sale shit. It's like the vinegar syndrome thing, so you already get your money spent like yeah, months Severin ago. Severin does that. Severin or, does halfway. To black yeah, maybe, maybe they do too. But then Severin has their. I, I just kind of I do the vinegar syndrome thing, and then yeah. if Severin comes around. Like I've already paid for this shit, so I'll pick a couple the other titles or whatever, and then Severin comes out if I want to pick yeah. up some shit. So it's, it, I feel like it's been spread out that way but i feel like if every company was doing black friday on black you'd be like i can't do this i mean m- most people can't do fucking just vinegar syndrome and severin because <laughs> it's just so expensive dude it's crazy it's just nuts. i like i might i think i didn't do a little from both like i'm pretty i'm pretty good with vinegar syndrome because they're so expensive that i don't really like buy a lot of stuff right away i yeah. monitor like the slip cover count on the stuff that i like i really like but even like I have like a couple things that I missed out on anyway. It's not the end of the world or anything. But like, um, I think I I think I'm gonna get like a decent amount from them. I I have to get. I just can't not get Cemetery Man unless it's something stupid like a hundred bucks. Like um, I like I have to get Cemetery Man. Yeah, they're sucking me in, man. Because any any time like the Italian titles get you know announced and shit, I'm just I'm like a fat kid on a smarty, dude. That that's like, just it like, gets me every time, bro. Like for someone I just, who likes ho- who's like into horror as much as we are and like all like subversive genres to it, like that is a holy grail title. That it, dude, it's... I've been saying this for years. I'm like, seven or uh, Cemetery Man needs that fucking Region One nice release and shit. And yeah. finally, like I, I couldn't ask for. I, I didn't really care who was gonna do it. It was just I just wanted it to come out and like nobody better than Severn, really. I mean, yeah, like I'm not complaining about the restoration work at all. Like the restoration works really good. Like, yeah but it's just yeah i'm like the same way like some of the unless it's like a real big title like i can't even i bought the four fly sing last year and i kind of like feel like kind of regret that well that I, was I'm the like, title that that was the title made dude. me fuck right off i even i was like you gotta be <laughs> fucking kidding me i never picked it up man i was like this is so expensive and so utterly ridiculous and i actually said Se- i fucked severin the whole i didn't pick up anything i was like this is absolutely ridiculous like i'm just not doing this so yeah. but yeah, uh, yeah. That was my moment like with Severin was three, the four, four flies K's for one ten for like one or one ten at Wasteland. So I kind of like, well, I didn't believe them because they said like you know we're not gonna like once it sells out we're not gonna do a standard edition shit. I'm like bullshit. Every fucking company says this shit. I mean, Synapse they, has been notorious for doing that. Like, oh, we're not gonna do a, a an Amray case release for fucking demons, and then what happens? Demons one and two come out on Amrays. Like, the, all their steel books have had standard releases, yeah. but they kept saying they weren't gonna do it. I'm like. I'm like, I I hate the trickery. I love snaps, but come on, man. Fuck off with that shit. Like, stop lying to us. But it's with like, like if you Severin- think about it too, like what like like you're gonna get this giant, like w- like wanted title and only sell three thousand of them or something? Like, are you yeah. stupid? I know. It makes no sense. And let's say of course they sign the rights and they can only sometimes that's the way the rights work. You can only produce so many copies and shit like that. We've talked about this many times. Yeah, the there was um, it, it, there was it does a happen. It was fairly well, there was Recently. the title that Severin did, um, uh, not Trump's combat War. shock, Com- combat shock. Yeah. And that one yeah. actually in the contract, they were only allowed to produce so many copies and went to it was sold like 250 or something, some crazy shit. I ended up missing that one because it was weird. so expensive. It sold out like, yeah, right cause it, like, it was like two, I think they only did like 250 of them or something. It was really low. It was, it was something really ridiculously low. Yeah. So, yeah. and it was I'm really like, expensive. Oh, it was crazy. And it, it like, I'm just not going to go to Severn and buy one title, you know, that expensive title and pay the shipping convert. Like it would cost me 150 bucks. Yeah. Like who can justify that? Nobody. So yeah, I, I think I'm definitely going to get Mark of the devil from vinegar syndrome. And I'm definitely going to get cemetery man from Severin. Oh, so Mark, probably... that, that edition's nice. I just got it in the mail. Yeah, it's beautiful, man. So I'm going to like, probably like just fill out the minimum on both those sales. Mm-hmm. I like, I just can't like, I can't stand paying for shipping. So I'm just like not doing that. Right. That's the one thing I like about finger syndrome, man. You spend a certain amount, it's free shipping. It's fucking great. Every company should do that. Even if it would be the same price, Dude, even if it's a hundred bucks, like I'll live with it. But like, it's like build, build the shipping into your prices if you have to, but like 
for whatever reason, my brain does not want me to pay for shipping. Exactly. If it, I just, for- it feels bad when you're like, okay, I'm getting like these three movies for like 65 bucks and you can live with that. And then all of a sudden it's like seven ninety nine for shipping standard. You're like, I think with Severed, like, don't they have like, they, they have it like, you know, free under t- or over 200 for Canadians or something like that, because a hundred dollars is like a title and a half. Right. <laughs> so, you know, they got to make it a little bit higher, I guess, but. But still, even spending 200 bucks at Severn is not fucking hard to do. It yeah. really isn't. Like, you should be getting free shipping think, if you're going buck wild on Black Friday and yeah. shit. So, last year, I hit the free shipping by getting, I got four flies and I got like um, the two Alex D. Iglesias titles on 4K and it was like right. 105. And I was like, all right, I can live with this. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't take much <laughs> to get up to that fucking free shipping quota. So, but, uh, yeah, like I'm looking forward to the second half of what they're going to announce. I hope it's more Italian titles and classic shit. I don't know. I'm just, I'm always curious. Yeah. The um, suspense I, kills I me. I heard like a little rumor from someone like that's an industry connection that it's potentially like we might like, it's rumored that it's the sect and the church going also. Well, the church they announced already. Oh, they yeah, did? The, so yeah, I didn't church, even know that. <laughs> well, that's what I said. I said cemetery man in the church, but the sect would make sense because. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, the church was released by what Scorpion, I think, the Doppelgangers, same company, and yeah, shit like Scorpion that. slash uh, Doppelganger. <laughs> it's a, it's the same company, but uh, um, and then I think the sec was also released, same thing. I think something like that. I don't know. I have them, but whatever, whatever. I'd be happy with you know. I like the sec too. It's fun. It's fun. Yeah, no, but like the title the I want. Because I, I fucking still well, don't that have, would be I, that would be three Suave films. Well, then you do all four, do Stage Fright because Stage Fright doesn't actually have. I feel like release. Blue Underground might own it. I know. I'm wondering if Blue Underground still has the rights to it or whatever. But I'm surprised that they if they still do have the rights to them. I'm really shocked that they haven't done thought, a, a, yeah. another because they did a Blu-ray release. I never picked it up for some odd reason. I think it's out of print now. Whatever. It doesn't go it for is. that much. But you can get the Shameless one. It's like a nice ultimate edition, whatever. It's not even that expensive for that one, but I'm sure the transfer zone is good. But, but I, I, I kept thinking to myself, I'm like, well, the church cemetery man, I'm like, maybe it's going to be a suave fucking Black Friday, you know, and yeah. we're going to get stage fright in the second. Just I, that would, it would be so enticing to me to, um, to I mean, I have that original, um, scorpion. It, it the, the transfer is really good on that, yeah, too. That one. I've so only watched I'm not one. really super like I don't need to upgrade it right now. I yeah, that's when like I'll, I'll kick the can. I'm like I'll wait till it's half price, like a year and a half from it's now. So, if I end up getting that church, I have so many copies of the church. It's out, it's like out of control. You know, that's one I haven't watched it since we reviewed it. I, should I watched. Watch it. I think I rewatched it last one. year. Actually, I only watched it once. I think I rewatched it last year for a time. It's good. It's like Demons Three. It's fun. It's a fun movie, man. I love the setting of it, man. Like the, it's just it's awesome. It's fucking cool, man. Yeah. But yeah, it's got a great soundtrack too. I actually just picked up the vinyl for that too. So it's great. It's good shit. I usually only pick up like um like Italian soundtracks on vinyl. So yeah. But um, so yeah, so I was going through the vaults before the show, and uh, I was looking at some of the the show notes from like the previous like last couple of years and stuff, and I was trying to see if we had done like a top um like Italian horror list. So last week we talked about like the top, what was it? <laughs> Fucking 26, 27 giallos, whatever. Yeah. And, and I was trying to find if we had done one recent, but I couldn't find anything in the show notes. So do you remember us doing one? It, it might've been years and years ago. Um, I know we did a ranking for Argento, a ranking for Falchi. Yeah. Um, I think we may have done an Ita- just a straight Italian director one. Yeah, like top remember. ten Italian directors. I can't remember, but I don't know if we did a Italian horror in general. Okay, so maybe. Anyways, so the first thing I, I I typed in, I was like, you know, the top whatever top Italian horror films, and the first list that came up, it actually something I usually never look at, but I I just thought it was kind of interesting that it was actually on there. But it's actually from RottenTomatoes.com, and the way they do their list, it's basically ranked by fresh and non fresh or whatever, right? I think that's yeah. how they do them. So, um, that's the one I clicked on. There was a couple other ones and stuff like that, but I was like, whatever. So the top, and this is the weirdest fucking list too. It's like the top 46 best Italian horror movies. So, so explain (laughs) to me 
why 40 like last week we had 27 and now we got 46 what's with these weird ass numbers yeah why would you just not go to 50 at that point exactly that's the first thing i thought yeah. of when i saw this list i'm like why didn't they just make it a top 50 because you know there's four other lit movies that are ranked on here <laughs> they didn't see that many movies i'm like <laughs> that is so bizarre but i gotta scroll right down to the bottom here because it came up as like one to 46 i'm like shit so anyways so remember this is done by like the fresh and the non-fresh kind of bullshit yeah. So the ones I the believe the way that works is it just they just take like reviews it, uh, from all over the internet. Yeah. Okay. So and number forty six with a ten percent. So what is it called? Unfresh. I guess ten percent rotten. 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 Yes. Yeah, so I don't. I don't really. Pay. Okay. So ten percent rotten. So I mean, it's, it's the rotten. It's called rotten tomatoes. So. Oh yeah. Right. Rotten tomato. Holy shit, dude! I'm that. That just proved how stupid I am. I'm really not that <laughs> smart. Fuck. Okay. So number 46 with a 10% rotten rating is Phantom of the Opera, 1998. Like, Fucking I haven't seen this one. Really? Yeah, there's a few, like, some of those, like, where that our general started getting really bad. It's like, I've seen, like, all the ones except those that it's like, damn, man, I, I don't want to watch Michael Jordan play in a Wizards jersey. Dude, there's one Honestly, part dude, movie. I kind of I like it. There's one part in this movie I literally had to rewind like four times. It, it made me laugh so fucking hard. The last, like when we reviewed it last time, I was pissing myself again. I, uh, I feel like never been captivated by the family of the opera story in general. Like the no, only yeah, the only adaptation I like is the De Palma one. Isn't that Julian Sands in there? Yeah, I was just about to say rest in peace to Julian Sands. Here, they actually oh, did find yeah, his yeah. body for the people. I don't know if we ever mentioned it on the show, but yeah, so he was obviously missing for a couple months, and they they actually found his body. So that's yeah, good to know sad. that yeah it's sad he just disappeared hiking and shit and just didn't make it man but yeah rest in peace julian sands <laughs> fortunately he was in a fan of the opera from 98 it's it honestly it's one of those movies where i talked about even last week you know like you watch it when it comes out and you're just like oh my god it's the worst thing ever and then you remember it being the worst thing ever and then you rewatch and you're like well it i i could i i'm taking the humor out of it too because there's one part that literally i had to rewind like four times it's so fucking funny to me man <laughs> you know what part i'm talking about <laughs> it's so funny but um anyways number 45 with a 14 percent rotten wow uh 1972's barren blood from mario bava Ooh, that's 14. Barren blood's pretty decent yeah but 14 yeah it's dude? like 40 yeah 14 percent's low dude most of these are gonna be rotten yeah i, <laughs> yeah, I actually didn't like, i did i haven't really scrolled i just like i said i saw what the just number one was because, because i had no choice because dude these these things were shredded when right. they came out and right. and i think they do use like even reviews that are you know from old publications if they must they must okay so number 44 with a 17 percent. oh this is funny wow this is crazy um is uh argento's dracula so this one's actually got a better rating than barren blood <laughs> what the fuck how this like is another one i just like i refuse i just haven't watched it i don't want to see it yeah, we talked about this one actually being a little bit better like, than we all remembered it too. I, I remember you guys saying that last week, but it's like it's so long. Yeah, if it was ninety minutes, no problem. But when you like when you hear all these things about it and the runtime's like one hundred fourteen minutes, you're like, oh. But don't you feel like you need to finish Argento? I do, and I know like I, it's inevitable because I've seen like something like seventeen or seventeen or eighteen. So I'm yeah. like, like, I'm almost there. So it's inevitable. But man, yeah. So yeah, so that's dracula from 2012 70 percent. okay this is ridiculous this just blows my mind number 43 with a 20 percent is the card player like <laughs> dude we talked about this last this movie sucks man Ugh. it's definitely his worst i think it's his worst movie too it's really i mean like i said before like this movie was it was outdated in 2003 right it felt dated in 2003 it's just crazy such an ugly movie um what the fuck <laughs> what the fuck okay number 20 or number 40 wow that was very dyslexic moment there number 42 so the jackie robinson here 25 percent is the new york ripper 1982. wow that's aggressive dude that, that, that i like, can see like that a, almost, like, that almost like hurts where... my feelings if i took this shit serious because you that's know what my though, favorite uh, film of 82 is the knowing what ripper. kind of movie it is it's like more offensive than a lot of them yeah so, i was gonna right. say that wow 25 percent though that's i can that's... see like women overall like really not liking that movie oh we're, we're going up pretty quick here though okay so number 41 with a 33 percent rotten is Fulci's the black cat from 1981 
Okay. That's interesting. Um, but yeah, it's like 8% jump. Uh, number 40 with a 40% rotten is make them die slowly, AKA cannibal Ferox from Umberto Lenzi. Um, okay. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's trash, but I love it. Um, oh, for fuck's sakes, you gotta be shit now, brother. Number 39, 41% rotten zombie. 79 uh, faulty. <laughs> Man, faulty's ridiculous. all over this section. Like that's the third faulty film. What the hell? Okay. Oh my God. Number 38, 45% rotten. The house by the cemetery. 81. Mm. Another faulty. Wow. Faulty's getting, he's getting ransacked. I'm curious to know what the fucking best ones are considering all the best ones are being listed. <laughs> oh my God. Number 37, 40% rotten rating. City of the Living Dead. 80. What wow. is this? Is like all faulty films in here. What the hell? Uh, now these, I'm starting to be like, all right, come on, guys. These are some of my all time favorite films that are all in this section. <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, oh my God. What? The, okay. Number 36 with a 47. Think about this. So number 37 had a 40%. Number 36 has a 47. So we're up 7% better. Is uh, Argento's Mother of Tears. It's okay to laugh. You guys can laugh. <laughs> mm-hmm. Man, dude. That's one I watched that a long time ago, and I just like I don't have the heart to watch it again. That, that, I actually that, like it, but this, this is blowing, DVD. It's not better than Zombie. <laughs> this is blowing my man. This is just full of yeah, Argento oh, and Fulci. Yeah, zombie right now. being that Zombie that being that was offensive. So I know because Zombie's probably like my like it, realistically Zombie might be my like one or two favorite italian horror movie i'm like not even the most giant fan of zombie but it's like zombie is a way better movie than like most italian horror movies oh fuck i love zombie man okay so number 35 with the 50 percent rotten 93's trauma some more argento this is like all argento <laughs> and Fulci at the bottom here like what because they're popular so there's enough reviews on them i don't like right. drama so i'm right. fine with that that actually makes sense that actually makes sense i never really thought yeah because if they're taking they're compiling reviews from all over the net the worldwide yeah. wet uh, web you know i mean it makes more sense so number 34 from 1980 is umberto lenzi city of the walking dead yes no i don't know i'm conflicted i love that movie jp doesn't uh, number 33 oh, nightmare is it nightmare city yeah number city city walking dead same thing yeah yeah that movie is not good that, no, it's, it's probably one of my least favorites oh it's so <laughs> much fun dude oh it's got a great dummy death in it too uh number it, that three. it does have that i'll give you that oh <laughs> it's, dummy it's, it's, it's fuck dude there's ah oh, man anyways <sighs> it's not a zombie film it's a fucking infection film it's funny umberto lenzi actually came out like he got pissed when people call it a zombie film it's funny uh number 33 uh, with a 52% is very, very modern. Uh, Argento's Dark Glasses. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that wow. makes sense because there's the same reason. Wait, wait like is, is 58 considered fresh? No, 52. It's like, it's like average. Yeah, 50. Well, well when it's, does it's, it, when's, where's the fresh threshold? I think it's 60%. I'm pretty sure it's 60 if I remember correctly, but yeah. we're, still, we're still rotten. So 52% is okay. still rotten. I think it's 60%. I'm not sure. We'll, we'll figure it out here. So number 32 with a 56 is 73's torso from the man, Sergio Martino. Okay. Torso is pretty damn good. Man, it's like the same directors over me. Okay. So number 31, 58% still rotten. Lisa and the devil from 73, which I really like. I don't know if I've seen that. Yeah, I've seen that. I've only seen that cut, though. I haven't seen the House of the Exorcism cut. Oh, dude, it's so oh, funny. Wait, did we review this before? Yeah, yeah we did. Maybe I did yeah, it's it. got Telly Savalas in it. it it's a, he kind of plays the devil. It's it's cool, man. It's got a lead of Ollie, right? Yeah, it does. And uh, yeah, like when you watch the other cut, it's so bizarre. Like the subplot that they put into it, it's just crazy, dude. It's so fucked up, man. Yeah, it's it. You yeah, know, I, it's ha- I have it. The the Kino cut, the Kino Blu-ray comes with both cuts, so I'll watch it eventually. Yeah, it's like the the. Um, the uh the arrow has both the versions on it too i actually watched them back to back one night and uh it's interesting to watch it back to back it's pretty interesting yeah um so number probably, th- that's my watch i don't even remember it yeah number 30 with a 58 percent still rotten is a classic horror story from 2021 how random is that another modern one i haven't even heard of this movie honestly. i really i really liked didn't it didn't make your top 10 minutes yeah dude i really liked it man i was like the it seemed like i was the only one that even watched it man like everyone's yeah. like i didn't watch yeah, that when i passed I, on that I one i still haven't seen it i think it's because of the title and i i think i might have mentioned that before too it's like people just passed over like a classic horror story that sounds cornball 
like honestly when i first saw the title i was like oh my god this is going to be terrible and i kind of looked into it and i was like what this is like an italian film modern italian film and i really enjoyed it it's good but oh feelings are hurt number 29 oh but we're fresh 61 so it is 60 percent then so 61 percent fresh and that is uh cemetery man Mikel suave's at least it's fresh mm-hmm. yeah you know, least, if you think about it like two out of three people like it that's what that means right well it's good yeah it's good okay so oh man another one we just mentioned a couple times uh number 28 with a 63 percent fresh four flies on gray velvet from 71 another argento film mm-hmm. i feel like every argento film is going to be on here it's ridiculous <laughs> Still like uh, so. oh this is random number 27 with a 63 percent uh fresh and it's beyond the door part two which is also known as shock Mario Bava's shock. I haven't seen it. It doesn't say that. I haven't it, seen it either. It literally tells you the alternate title because Beyond the Door is like an Exorcist ripoff. And then they were feeding off of that shit. So they, the alternate title for Shock was Beyond the Door Part Two. It's ridiculous, but it's nothing to do with that. But Shock's okay. It's fun. Um, number 26, 63% fresh hatchet for the honeymoon. More Mario Bava. All mm-hmm. right. Uh, okay. Number 25, 63%. Uh, Inferno. 1980 or Argento good one okay number 24 64 percent wow this one that's crazy this is higher than Inferno um is uh Suave's the church we just we're talking about that one too okay. cool I'm kind of okay with that we're about uh, the same oh here's a jump so we went 64 percent to 69 <laughs> uh number 23 which is uh demons from 1985 of course Lamberto Bava's classic so I imagine Demons 2 is going to be above it. Uh, number 22, 67. What? Oh, they fucked up on here. So this one actually shouldn't be at number 22. should be number 23, I guess. Demons 2 <laughs> with 67. <laughs> so it's actually, yeah, they fucked up on here. Uh, oh, yeah, they fucked up on this list big time. So number 21 with a 67. So Demons is actually higher than both of these. Um, is Cannibal Holocaust. 67%. So Demons is technically higher than both these. Oh my god, they fucked up this whole list. So I wonder I wonder if it was put together when the tomato meter was different. Yeah. I don't know. I okay, so I think that meter is static like it it go it goes yeah. up and down. I think so too. I think you're right about that. So maybe they a put lot the of these, list together yeah, so whenever like, they were different. Okay. Cannibal that actually, Holocaust seems like one that might get reviewed like more frequently than a lot of these, but I can see it fluctuating. Yeah. Um actually again, this one's fucked up too. Number twenty is uh with a sixty eight percent is the beyond from eighty one, Fulci's beyond. So that one is actually a little bit out of order too. Okay, so uh, I guess we're back into order. Number 19, 71% is the evil eye, which is also known as the girl I knew too much. Um, if yeah, right. Mario Bava, 1963, considered to be one of the very first gels. I think we talked about that last week. Um, 19 or number 18 with a 71% is 1963 is what? Oh, which is also known as Isn't um, that a Polanski movie? No, uh Whip in the Body. A whip in the body yeah, it's okay. funny they use all the alternate titles on here and i have to actually use my <laughs> brain because they're not written on here. it's all the alternate titles like the evil eye scrolling new too much and what is the alternate title for whip in the body which we've reviewed i believe we were yeah we did yeah we did with um with uh tom didn't we for as well when he was on the show yeah. uh yeah i wasn't on that show though oh right yeah so but yeah but we did that one okay so it's chris Lee film it's uh it's good uh, number 17, 71%. What have they done to Solange? 1972. Nice. Um, number 16 is 73%. The Demon Planet, which is also known as Planet of the Vampires from 1965. More Mario Bava. I love that movie. That movie is fucking awesome, dude. It's a totally underrated Mario Bava film. Um, number 15. Oh, JPO like this. Uh, 75%. The Stendhal Syndrome. More Argento. Ooh, that's- yeah man it's like argento uh, baba and fulci on here man holy fuck dude is so much that's pretty good for this movie yeah that's what i was yeah i know like i love stand hall and the more that i the more i've seen it and like listen to the commentaries and stuff like i think it's actually a really good movie it Mm -hmm. it it, it is a little slow like it's a little slow because like two hours but it's an interesting 
ideas in there. Okay, so number 14, and we've got a pretty decent hike here from 75% to 81 uh, is Tenebrae from 1982. <laughs> More Argento. Fuck, I think we've named off every Argento film, man. It's crazy. <laughs> uh, number 13. Okay, so obviously this list. So this is 80%. Blood and Black Lace from 64. Of course, that's Mario Bava. Yeah, that's one of the best, probably. Uh, number 12, 81% to Cow to Nine Tails. Wow. Interesting. Wow. People people rate that movie very highly. I've yeah, noticed. man. More I just picked right up there. the 4K of that and Birth of Crystal Plumage. Maybe I'll watch both of those tonight. I, I have the 4K of that sealed. And the mm. funny thing is, is I had I had I had the Blu-ray from Arrow sealed. <laughs> right. <laughs> that I never got to. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, I've right. definitely watched the Arrow Blue a couple of times. Yeah. Uh, number 11, 83% is uh, Don't Torture a Duckling, 1972, more Fulci. Well, that's mm. that's that's good to hear. That It kind of makes yeah. sense now that you think about it, because like, in terms of like, I could see that one appealing to like the more non-horror fan, which is probably what m- the majority of those reviews are. Right. I, I know some people that aren't really horror fans that like really like this movie. This movie... Mm-hmm. I think a lot a lot of people who just like good movies can get more out of this. Yeah. Uh number into the top ten, eighty six percent fresh, a bay of blood, Mario Bava, nineteen seventy one. <laughs> wow. Uh number nine, more Mario Bava, eighty six percent Black Sunday from nineteen sixty. That's crazy. Okay. Um <laughs> fuck. Number eight, eighty eight percent. Uh we got Black Sabbath from nineteen sixty three, more Mario Bava. Uh, number seven, ninety percent. We're in the nineties now. Opera from eighty seven. Wow, <laughs> that's not out of 10. I mean, people I'm like not opera. I, I mean, I it's like, I like top opera. three for me. It's literally every Argento film's in here. It's crazy. It's fucking. Nuts. It's the same yeah, reason. Sleepless why, like, wasn't there, and okay, so number six, the Hitchcock Giallo as well. Yeah, number six is ninety three percent, and then it's Deep Red. Oh, I thought that would be number one. More Argento. I, okay, so number five is uh, Lizard and Woman's Skin, 1971. Ooh. Fulci. Okay. okay, wow. Number four. Oh, and by the way, that was 100%. Number five is 100%. Lizard and Woman's wow. Skin. Wow. So we went from Everybody 93 to 100. It. So number four <laughs> is also 100% from Fulci, and that's The Psychic. Very interesting. Oh, baby, I love that one too. Honestly, I like these. These are like my favorite Fulci films, like these like mid-card ones like this. Right. Uh, number three is uh, also 100%. Your Vice is a Locked Room and Only I Have the Key, 1972. I appreciate that. Sergio Martino. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. This hasn't been mentioned. Number two with an 85%. <laughs> what the fuck? We just went from 100 like multiple times to 85% at number two, which is Argento's uh, The Bird with the Crystal Plumage. That's interesting. Okay. And number one is at 94%. Is Suspiria, which is our and I, I so I'm confused how f- all those other Argentos are on there, but Phenomena isn't. That's yeah, crazy. right. How That's is Phenomena not on here? So f- you mean to tell me Phenomena is like under ten percent? Because that was the bottom of the barrel. Wow. So our, so Phenomena wasn't there. Sleepless, and it's pretty much it. Oh, Yalo, uh, Yalo, yeah, yeah, do you like yeah. Hitchcock? Yeah, do you like Hitchcock? Yeah. So there's a few. Yeah. But but the weird thing is is you have stuff on there like um Femme and the Opera and Dracula, but not Phenomena. That seems yeah. weird. And there's no way, those, like if you typed in Phenomena, like can you search like that in, in the You probably could, but those are you could probably just put Phenomena Rotten Tomatoes and see what comes up. But like I feel like those the Dracula and the Family of the Opera ones might get a little bit of like review inflation just because they're like adapted from universal properties so maybe yeah. like more people just watch those movies yeah so yeah so i typed it in in rotten tomatoes and it comes up as 74 percent. so it would be kind of like mid-tier if it was on if it was incorporated to that list phenomenal what a bunch of fucking drop the ballers yeah so I, that might have been just missed but yeah 74 percent is actually like in theory would have been like it's actually pretty fucking high 74 because we were in the 60s for a long time so 74 would have been roughly around the stendhal syndrome at 75 percent. so number 15 
14, 15 kind of thing. Interesting. So phenomena, yeah. I mean, that's just kind of a missed one. Fucking rotten tomatoes.com. <laughs> Get your shit straight. Totally out of order. We got all these hundred percent, and then the top one's ninety one or ninety four. <laughs> Rambo. I don't disagree. Uh, I do think that Suspiria is a good candidate for the best Italian horror film. No, I would not? agree with that as well. It's definitely probably the most popular, talked about one kind of thing, right? Everybody. I think it's Suspiria. like the easiest one you could just like show someone and it like encapsulates like mm -hmm. Italian yeah. horror. You know, like I mean, if you were to introduce somebody to Italian, like they were like, "Oh, I want to, I want to get into Italian films." Like, what would be the film that you would demons? Or I think Suspiria. demons. Too, I, demons is the first thing that comes to my mind too. Like in like realistically, I would show them. Yeah, because here's why. I'll, I'll tell you why too. Because demons, like what are what are the what are the knocks that somebody that's new to Italian horror might say about it? That they're overly plotty. Maybe they're convoluted. Yeah. Uh, the um, you know the uh the pacing stuff like that. You know mm -hmm. the, the dubbing the dubbing um so you take something like demons which has uh you know some of the dubbing and and certain issues that that you would run into with italian films but it's so fun and fast paced that it's not going to be as hard of a watch for someone new and it's going to ease them into those negatives. Well, that's versus... what I was thinking too. It's a perfect one to ease into somebody because it almost, cause like Bava had in Argento had this idea when they were making the film to make it more Americanized too, by throwing in the, the American soundtrack and stuff like that and, 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 and making it appeal to the American audience, the Western audience a little bit more than probably the previous efforts. So like with that said, if you're used to watching Western films, you know, you kind of get that a little bit in it too, but you also get the total Italian flavor with the effects and the dubbing and just, you know, right. the narrative and shit. Like you get both aspects and then you can kind of work backwards. Like then you can get into shit like, you know, Inferno and fucking, you know, crazy, like even zombie, like, you know, get into some of that yeah. type of shit too. Right. But, yeah. I think, I think that demons is like literally like the perfect, like dip your toe in type thing because mm -hmm. it's demons is very different from a lot of Italian movies, but it has some of the similar aspects that are going to sort of culture people to know what they're getting into. Right. Right. Like, I mean, I don't think you'd want to start off somebody with like cannibal Holocaust. Cause I mean, it's pretty oh. rough, pretty rough watch for somebody that's, you know, if you're not used to watching stuff like that, like that might be, <laughs> um, it might just not hit right. You know what I mean? So, but I would show somebody like something very Italian, like something like a burial ground. Like, I love that shit, man. Like, it's, it's the epitome of zombies and Italianness. It's amazing. So Demons is a reasonable choice because, like, uh, I think, like, you got it. Like, that's I have I even like I'm not aware of all the time is when you're showing people like that aren't into movies, movies like you need to pick something that's got like a fast pace. Exactly. Well, it, it, the best like thing that i could think of is the fact that you know when it comes to italian mm. horror movies carly's not like the biggest fan but she yeah. loves demons you know and she loves suspiria there's like a certain titles are more appealing to people who aren't like because it is an acquired taste to a certain extent like i'll yeah. be the first to admit that like when i first started watching these movies i thought they were extremely overrated like the first time i saw a zombie i was like that's it that's that's what everybody's like loves so much but I didn't understand that it was like, like I was just looking at it like a narrative and I'm like, the narrative is like fucking super simple, right? Like there's, there's, mm -hmm. a, there's a, some experiment voodoo shit going on on this Island and zombies break out. And there's this girl and this dude who are looking for the, her dad. It's, it was super simple. Right. Right. But so if you're just looking at it like a narrative, uh, like I did for almost all movies when I first started like getting into the, the, you know, fandom, uh you know now you look at other things that didn't really appeal to me like atmosphere and or maybe it did appeal to me but it was like subconscious i didn't know why i you know i didn't know how to verbalize it but um italian horror the more you watch it is and, and it's cool because we've basically documented my journey you know what i mean like right. you were already a fan of this stuff mids mm -hmm. Uh, when we started this show, but I actually had only seen like Suspiria and like zombie, like when we started this show. So mm -hmm. it, it definitely sort of, um, 
it, it takes time if you like it, it not for everybody some people get it right away and they understand they, they understand what's cool about italian horror whereas other people like me don't really get it and then eventually get it so if you watch some italian horror for, and you're not you're like iffy on it you don't think it's really, really that good you just gotta watch more and you'll eventually get the you'll, you'll eventually get the tone and like the cultural differences in filmmaking style uh of the time well especially and the dubbing like it's i think it's dubbing, one yeah it's one it's one aspect of italian filmmaking that i think that people some people just can't get past you know and yeah. i'm like well it's because back in like they used to record everything without sound and then they would go in and do their english dubs and then their their italian dubs so you you could watch either way but like I, there's so many italian films that are actually shot in they're speaking english and then so it kind of more matches up with that but then if you watch the italian version this is like way off but i i can see why people you know kind of can't accept it i guess because if you're so used to watching western films where it's shot with sound and stuff and you know it's just it's different the adr is you know it matches perfectly and shit be a little bit off-putting to people so i've heard people say that they can't get into it so but then you know again i've heard i've heard people say that they can't get into black and white films just because they're in black and white and i'm like fuck, like it just it blows my mind as someone that watches pretty much everything to like just not be able to accept a film because of it's not color blows my fucking yeah. mind it just blows <laughs> my mind like i can't well, even I, understand like that for the life of me there's this dude that i work with that who's real cool um i like him a lot uh but he he's not like a big movie fan or anything he likes i like some anime and stuff but mm -hmm. um i was talking to him about like different things and and he hates he's he hates watching subtitled movies like he, yeah yeah he can't do it he says that his like brain won't let him like look at the the what's happening on screen and the words at the same time right <laughs> i mean there's tons of people and I, that i always make that joke it's been a running joke on the pot on the podcast for years where i'm just like people don't be afraid to read your movies it's fine <laughs> you know like but there's so many people out there like i even remember from the youtube days there's people that openly admit like i won't watch this like i remember this one guy i'm not going to say his name but he wouldn't watch martyrs because it was it was fucking subtitled and the irony is is that the dude was actually a french guy <laughs> I'm like Jesus Christ! I'm like this is so fucking stupid, That's man. Ridiculous. But like he wouldn't watch because it's subtitled, and I'm just like, man, like I, I just couldn't imagine missing out on films because I didn't want to take the chance of, you know, learning how to watch a subtitled film. Like there's an actual way to do it, right? Like you don't literally have to read every single word because you're watching it too, and you I, I can read and watch at the same time because like, I've done it thousands of times right like I really don't have an issue like if I pop in a movie sub, I'm like oh fuck it subtitle there is times where it's like super late at night and I know I'm tired and shit and like I really don't want to focus on words and shit like that but but that's yeah. different that's a different occasion I mean we all have those moments where you're not I mean sometimes I won't even pop in a movie because I'm super fucking tired as it is and even if I don't have to fucking read it but yeah at but night you, though like I do the same thing I like just like won't watch a subtitled movie yeah I mean it's just hard yeah. to focus like if you're yeah, tired I'm it's the like, same way man yeah like, you, like I try to actually, I usually try to make my last movie of the night something I've seen before. Yeah. That's cool. That, that's, that's my go-to thing because like, I know I'm probably going to doze off and I like falling asleep to shit that I like. <laughs> you know yeah. what i mean <laughs> exactly. i know that's kind of funny it's a funny way to put it you're like i love this movie but i fall asleep to it every single time <laughs> <laughs> like you know you know one of my favorite like i i can't find something to watch i'm i know i'm gonna fall asleep let me just throw something on my biggest most consistent one i choose a lot is phantasm really yeah i actually i, I watch phantasm a lot in, at night too in dawn of the dead yeah because like fan, i don't know phantasm like because it's like kind of dreamlike and shit yeah and i actually have a vcr that's hooked up to another little tv that's like closer to like the bed that sometimes i'll just throw phantasm in there and nice. it's all grainy and shitty looking but it, it feels right <laughs> right that's hilarious nice okay so yeah that is the um what was it top 40 fucking six 46 yes. italian horror films according to Rotten. you're Tales. telling me you went with 46 and didn't put phenomena there right <laughs> i mean that's just more of a reason that they could have made the top 50 i bet you if I, I typed in a bunch of films that weren't on that list they come up and they're probably in the same ranking like 75 percent and shit like come on S stage fright well you just know that the rest of martino's films like his zombie pop, more three ones i've got to be on there like they've got to be they've got to be ranked right so but 
or rated, I should say, whatever you want. House to call on it, the right? Edge of the Park. There's a bunch missing. Oh, there's so many. There's so many good films. Realistically, that like if we're talking about the 46 best ones, like you probably realistically wouldn't be getting like lower than like 65, 70 percent. Oh, they should be all fresh. Like you could easily yeah. have 46 fresh films. I mean, yeah, there's how, no how way. Could you like, not? If you were making like a 46, you have like code, we, like 10 percent. Yeah, but we were starting at 10 percent, and that was fucking. Uh, 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 Phantom of the Opera. Like, come on. <laughs> like, you got a list of best and you got Phantom of the Opera on there? You're losing all credibility, bros. Come on. Not cool. But, um, but yeah, anyways, um, yeah, week two, Luciano or Coley, you guys want to get into these films or what? Yeah. Yeah. Wow, the, the enthusiasm <laughs> was just, that was crazy good, man. That was really, really good. <laughs> I'm liking that shit because I don't have anything else to talk about. The JP got anything? Um, no. Okay. Saucedo, you got anything? I do not. Okay. Well, with that said, we will wrap up this intro and we'll get into the feature re- reviews here in one moment. You. Yeah. And now, our feature presentation. All right, so getting into the featured reviews here on episode 244, week two of Italian Horror Month. We have Luciano Ercoli, director Spotlights, and we're going to start off uh, with his first yellow from 1970, and it is called The Forbidden Photos of a Lady Above Suspicion. That is a great title. That's a long fucking title. Now that I is, actually am a fan of that title as well. Dude, it's such a great title for Giallo. It's awesome. It is, like, it is a very cool title. I will give it that. It's one of those titles where it makes you want to make up your own Giallo titles. Right? <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, it's like, I can think of something like that. That's pretty fucking cool. Every time I like want like think about making my own, I always end up having like an animal name in there or something like that. It's like, yeah, the like. What, what did I come up with one time? The it was chinchilla like, above the August moon. Yeah, the, there was like, oh, I can't remember the one I came up with. It was actually Dylan. God, Dylan came up with a really good one one time, too. And I was like, fuck, that's a good one, man. <laughs> um, but uh, actually, Dylan's actually coming over tonight. So I think there's a, like a generator somewhere online, like Giallo named generator. And it's just <laughs> always something ridiculous like that. Right. <laughs> Okay, they so have, like fake Italian names and directors like come up. I, too. Yeah, I remember. I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Speaking right. of which, I remember talking to a coworker once, like this older lady, and she was asking me like what I'm into and what I do and stuff. I was telling her about the podcast, and I was like, "Yeah, this th- this was a couple years ago." I was like, "I was like, yeah, this year, this is a uh, month we do Italian horror movies. So like we review all Italian movies that were horror films, usually from the 70s or 80s." And I started listing some of the titles we're we're doing. It was like <laughs> the year we did like Lizard in a Woman's Skin or something. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't torture a duckling. <laughs> right. And she's like, "Why? I never heard of these. <laughs> like these I are bet. real movies." Yeah. It sounds like you're just making up shit at yeah. this point. <laughs> right. That's what half of them sound like. Like you just made it up on the spot. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So quick little synopsis. The wife of a struggling businessman is blackmailed by a mysterious man into having a sadistic affair with him, or he will leak evidence implicating her husband of murder. All right. My so, God. yeah. So this isn't uh, Luciano or Coley director spotlight, but we could actually call it the, Nav- <laughs> the Nevis Navarro and um, Simone Andre Andrew fucking triple feature. Cause they're the two stars of all three of these movies. <laughs> It's kind of crazy, man. Like it, it, every time, like I remember watching all three of these films, I think it was last year. And I was just like, damn, it's so crazy to watch three movies in a row with the same two stars playing different characters in every fucking movie. But, yeah. but Nevis Navarro made sense at the time. Cause she was actually married to Luciano Coley. Um, so that made sense that it, she was kind of like the original fucking Rob zombie type thing. I guess <laughs> no, yeah. no one ever complains about Nevis Navarro being in all of her Coley's films, but, uh, yeah, she was the wife. Um, I've always loved her, man. She's very, very beautiful. Seen her in tons of films, man. She was kind of more of a, um, uh, like spaghetti Western. She was in a lot of spaghetti Westerns. Like she was in the double feature, like a pistol for Ringo and the return of Ringo and stuff. And what other movies have I seen her in? Oh yeah. The big gun down. She's in that film, which is really cool. Um, Ooh. 
she was also oh yes yeah, audio sabata um i believe that was that's the second or third one sabata films uh, also of course, known as susan scott yeah she went under the name susan, you know a lot of um uh, you gotta have Italian. an american name yeah they had to have the american name right uh she was also in uh all all the colors of the dark which we reviewed before she was in so sweet so dead um she was in obviously these three movies uh, she's been in a lot of notable italian films it's crazy um so but uh yeah she was also in orgasmo nero which is also known as the joe diamato film from 1980 it's it's actually really shitty it's like a terrible mo- movie but whatever <laughs> that one sucks but it's we won't we won't shitty. yeah it is it's pretty fucking bad um so yeah your guys' thoughts on the forbidden photos of a lady above suspicion from 1970 which was the first of basically three giallos that ercoli did in three years and that was it he didn't really do any more on this i don't know what the meaning behind that is to have three movies in three years and then just not do this type of subgenre anymore so don't know what's up with that but i guess he went from doing a lot of spaghetti westerns to this and then just kind of just went a different route i guess it's strange to me because when something's working you, you generally would try to stick with it but i guess not yeah dude it, it's always interesting when you like i mean we talk about so all the time too mm-hmm. how he did like four films and then did like some tv shit and never returned to the genre i know it's so fucking it, i i, I still have, like some sort of family thing happened i don't, I don't know, know. I, I think we i don't know i, I tried to look into it one time i'm not sure if i could find really any information but i know that he got into like yeah doing like a ton of tv shit maybe that's where the money was i have no idea i have no idea well, what i mean what you, the time period and the horror market in italy oh yeah the 90s <laughs> it completely i mean it's crazy to think that cemetery man came out at a time when it did because yeah there was really no market for it at all like you know there were still a few directors that were trying to pump out films in early 90s mid 90s and stuff like lamberto bava did body puzzle in like 91 and stuff there were some pretty decent italian films that came out around that time but yeah the market was very very dry and it had been what, for years what year really. did wax mac mass come out uh well that one was in production pre uh Fulci dying and stuff like that so that one actually came out I believe the year after like 97 or something yeah because that that always feels like one of the last like besides Argento stuff like yeah yeah because that that, w- that movie we all know would have been a completely different film because it was like Argento and um Fulci they were supposed to collab on that film and then they end up getting um uh the effects artist to to direct the movie uh what's his name um Fuck, his name is slipping my mind. I'm I'm so stupid right now. I can't believe I'm forgetting his name. He's like a f- super famous effects artist in Italy, <laughs> and he ended up doing the direction, filling in for Fulci and doing the direction. But yeah, I mean, it, it probably would have been a different film, but still, it's still a. It, it took me a couple watches to fully kind of appreciate it because I kept thinking to myself, like, what would Fulci have done with this? <laughs> you know, like uh, I can't I, help I, it. I like it. I, I mean, I I like the movie. Yeah, I mean, as it, it is, but yeah, it would have been cool to see Fulci do it. I'm just happy we even got those type of films in the '90s right right yeah fuck like okay so yeah the forbidden photos of a lady above suspicion i just want to keep saying that title because it's fucking awesome what are your guys' thoughts on on the film jp what are your thoughts uh i liked it more than i did the first time which i liked it back then too um yeah it's uh it's it's a pretty pretty interesting you know setup to the film um you know you have this this dude stuck in our lead and almost like you assume it's going to be like a rape but it it doesn't become a rape and then it becomes like this blackmail thing yeah and uh yeah it's like a dark narrative right yeah like this yeah guy, like- and and you actually one thing i'll say about this film is like you actually really like manu yeah and you yeah kind of I, she, feel for she, her. she's like she does a good job in her at least particular role in all these movies i wasn't so hot on the guy though oh on um Simone Andre. Uh, yeah, I wasn't like I, I was a little iffy on him, which we I think I think he movies. had the face. I think he was cast actually perfect as kind of like a sadistic blackmailer who's like forcing him himself on this woman and stuff I like couldn't, that. Like, I couldn't help this movie but to think like this guy feels like discount Ivan Rasimov. <laughs> <laughs> so did, did you have a problem with like in him because he plays three totally different nah, characters yeah, throughout I, these three movies? It's not that like I don't think he was like actually like bad in any of these movies. Yeah. But like he didn't like stand out to me. Like this movie in general, like I thought I don't think this movie's bad or anything, but this movie I felt was like a lot closer to average. Yeah, you know what, man? 
I've always, I, I don't know who I said this to one time and they actually laughed about it too. And I'm like, man, I, I was like, you know what the best thing about the forbidden photos of a lady above suspicion is, you know, like what? is the title of the movie, because I feel like this title is so good. Like you just, you, you think that it's going to be like the spectacular fucking, you know, giallo and stuff like that. But I've seen this movie like three or four times and I, I come away with the same feelings every time I watch this film. I'm like, I love the dark setup. I love the idea of what's going on. Um, you know, the payoff is decent in the film, but this one right here is a really slow, sluggish giallo because, you know, it doesn't really have a lot of shit going on in the, like in the film really it does like, like she, it just feels like she's spending so much of her time just avoiding this conversation with her husband and like protecting him and things like that. And just dealing with this. And you're just like, Okay, it, it, like there's not a whole lot of investigative angles to it. It's more like the sadistic role of this guy is kind of taking his shit a little bit too serious and stuff like that. But it just, it, it feels sluggish at times. Like it feels like it's dragging this one over and well, over again. It does come like right out of the canon. Like it, you kind of like yeah. fix it yourself and it kind of maybe gets you on pace where like you're ready for like a quicker, like yeah. a quicker pace movie. And yeah. Then, but it, it it, you kind of slow down your tempo a little and that's it does. What it feels like it drags it really does it feels like it's just dragging a lot of parts and stuff like that like i like her relationship with um with nevis navarro as dominique and stuff like that and there's one cool scene too where you know we get to see the this photo shoot with nevis navarro and stuff and she's showing her showing her shit off and stuff but um like the, i like the one scene where she's you know he's she's showing her um manu the the you know, like the porno pictures and stuff like that and then she kind of stops on this one picture and she's like holy shit it's you know it's the guy but she doesn't say anything kind of thing i like yeah. that in the narrative like how that was done like there's moments in the film you're like oh well that's kind of cool but then it kind of slows down like i feel like there's it's just her trying to avoid this conversation or you know and but there is a really funny moment in the film too kind of like when it breaks out and you know he finds out like you know that he's that she's been sleeping with this dude and stuff and then he basically calls her a slut <laughs> I laugh at that part every single time. I'm like, oh my so, god! Oh, some of the stuff like I, I can't remember exactly what was said in each movie, but between all of them, there was definitely a couple of, like good lines that like made me laugh out loud for stuff Dude, like that. There is, man. What, I think in the third that. film, in the third film, there's legitimate like she's called every name in the book in that movie. Like she's called a bitch and she's called a slut. Like it's fucking so funny, dude. Like it's just I don't know if it's intentional comedy, but it's coming off as pretty damn funny. Like, especially in the third film, there's definitely some moments in that film where it's pretty funny. Like, but how do yeah. you take that um, conundrum where she essentially finds out that her husband murdered May. a dude? Yeah. Well, and... she's told she's told this, right? But well, but right. That's, yeah. that's the problem with the narrative that I have is that like anybody could do this to somebody be like, hey, I've got something on your fucking husband, man. And like, you know, as that person, as Mano or Manu wouldn't you want to just get to the core of it right away instead of having to do these fucking terrible things with this blackmailer wouldn't you confront your husband like it just seems natural well, what does confronting the husband actually do it's still well maybe you just, still have the, the it, because if he didn't do this shit and this guy's just but, doing this stuff or whatever. i don't think she even considers that he didn't do it because she has his voice on tape talking about it Right. Right. I mean that, but that also comes later. That also comes a little bit later. Like she's made up her mind that she's not really going to say anything to her husband and it just keeps kind of going and she's dealing with all the sadistic shit and stuff. And I'm just like, man, like, so before she had that, you know, the, the, the tape recording and stuff like that, she's still dealing with it in her own little way and stuff. And it's, it just seems odd to me that you wouldn't be like, Hey, like this dude is fucking doing this shit. Like, you know, I, I guess as a person, you don't want to really find out that your husband, the person that you love has possibly killed somebody. I mean, that's very off putting. And I get that angle, you know, from a love aspect and stuff, but to be honest, but, like, but, but the way she handles it isn't even a way in a way where she thinks her husband's like a monster. Her way of handling it is like protect. She wants to protect him. Right. And that's what I was going to ask. Like, what, how do you feel? About yeah, but, at, that? Like, but at, but at her, st but at, at like her, you know, at, at like her state though like i mean she's suffering through this dude like this guy's sadistic and shit like you think that you would want to stop right but that. i think that's why that she's she's sacrificing herself for her husband right you know what i mean like that and but then there's also this uh like subtext that i'm not sure how to read into where 
you get the sense that she's almost bored with her life and that she almost uh you know what when he starts saying like you you enjoyed being under me or whatever the fucking yeah. creepy <laughs> gross thing he said right and uh <laughs> well she and, does she is and dis- she was like scratching his and they show the shots of her like scratching his back and shit like that and passion and so it, it, it's it, and it's it's that very like uh controversial and like touchy subject of like uh you know just because you're sexually stimulated during a rape doesn't mean that you enjoy you know that is that whole aspect that you're not enjoying it kind of thing yeah yeah you know there's like that whole sort of but i mean you do get the sense you do get the sense though that her husband is very very much wrapped up in his work and she you know she's a housewife like she doesn't work she just kind of bass in the money and shit like that she is bored so so maybe this is a little bit of a you know a highlight in her life maybe this is a little bit of color that she needed kind of thing and you know, I mean, That's you could I look at it. I felt like you could, because mm-hmm. I mean, the angle that she takes of like not saying anything right away, like, you know, the normal mind would be like, fuck this. Like, I'm not letting this dude do this shit to me. You know, I want to find out if this is actually happening. But, you know, you got the other half of people too. like you know, what do they say of like how many women fantasize about actually being raped? Like, I don't know if that's actually true. I'm not a woman, but, but I mean, if yeah, you they, guys have heard that term that it's before, a popular fantasy, it's a very popular fantasy. I'm like, maybe, you know, maybe she's fantasized about this one time and this is came to a reality and this is kind of her escape out of it and stuff. Who knows? But, but I mean, she does get to the point too, where, you know, he fabric, well, not fabricates, but yeah, I'm not going to try and ruin everything, but you know, with the tape and stuff like that. And, you know, she gets to that point where, now she's pretty much convinced that he has done this shit and you know like so there, there's also that too and i don't know man it, it just it, i guess it depends on which way you look at it right i mean me yeah. personally I, I don't know if i'd want to be dealing with some sadistic bullshit. like i just like to get the bottom of shit but like, that's just my i personal. didn't mind the narrative or anything but like i just felt like there was like yeah the pacing was a little off but like i don't nothing about this movie like stands out to me yeah well it's very tame it's very very tame in in reality right because we have one dude that gets killed in this film but it's off screen and there's not really a lot of like it's not violent it's more sadistic mm-hmm. in the sense of like yeah. you know the, the overtaking of the woman and stuff like it's got that dark elements but it's not like it's not bloody and gory and stuff like that he really definitely picks it up for the the death walks films in that aspect especially yeah, the third one like in a whole different mindset yeah like this one is it's it the pacing's different the narrative is very kind of like you know, I mean, really, the payoff in this one, I feel like, is kind of expected a little bit. You know, it's not yeah, it's like, like kind of a normal one. Yeah, it, it just it kind of feels like it goes into the place where you would expect it to go, and it kind of does. But I think it's the it's the battle getting to that point though too, because there is a lot of downtime. Like, there's a lot of scenes with Mino and, and Dominique and stuff, and you know, with the pictures and all this stuff. But there's just there's a lot I, of that. I, I think the reason, like, for example, like the movie last week that we reviewed at the end, the last one, the footprints on the moon one. Yeah. Um, I just was not interested in that lead character and didn't care much. You know, Mm -hmm. I remember like not just being really bored, but this one, like you, you're more like bored with it. And I actually was like interested in the character. I, I like the, I like the idea that she did. The, the, uh, there's honestly a l- lot of layers to it but mm-hmm. uh that she did this to protect her husband and i think that like the reason i accepted like the, the not getting to the bottom of the thing is because like i really don't even want to know if it's me like i would rather just like not know and like but again that comes down to personality too because you're meat. opening a can of worms with, with if you right talk about it because then you're opening the fact that you it's sort of was raped to protect him type thing uh you know and then like that's embarrassing and you but know what for, but how far are you willing to go to protect somebody even though husband? you might think in your in your mind that he might have actually done this shit but like you're uh, using your body though it's not just a it's not just a physical thing it's it's a mental thing with her too know, like she's, like, she's being physically like you, and feel, mentally abused and I like, feel like a lot of people would do a, like a, a lot for their family but like what happens if it turns out that you know it actually the husband's totally responsible for all this type of shit like and you just did you just sacrificed your mentality and your physicality for you well, know I know the inevitable. I'm not going to ask for help to hide a body yeah that's you 
<laughs> right. But I, again, I think it comes down to personality because like with me, if some, if some girl came to me and said like, Hey, you know, you, you do all this shit and, uh, or, you know, I've got this stuff on your web, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I, I go to, I go to my wife and be like, bro, like, this is what's happening. Like, I just have to get to the bottom. That's just my personality. Like right. I couldn't bask in, I couldn't sit around and like, and let someone torture me. I just get the truth. Like whether I want to know if it's true or not, it's not the point. I, I needed to get out there for my, my sanity too. But again, I you know, think, I, uh, I think I would just do it and then never speak of it again and, and just live with the secret. Oh God. I don't know, man. I did. Uh, that's not me, man. I couldn't do it. Because I like, like I'm it. doing it for, like, I'm saying if it was my wife, right? Like if it was my wife, same situation. And it, well, I feel like it'd be different because like, you know, if it's a yeah. girl, <laughs> like I, I'd probably be like, all right, I guess I'll have to have sex with you. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> but no, uh, but I'm going to complain the whole time. Uh, yeah. But um, no, like I, if you're doing it to save your your husband or father or mother or whatever from going to prison for the rest of their life. I, I mean, I understand keeping it hush hush and, and then also the embarrassment of it. And like the, uh, obviously the cheating aspect to it, even mm. if that's not what your intention was to sort of get that involved. It, you know, I understand why you would maybe want to keep it secret. Yeah. At first. I mean, yeah. It, it, you know, if you look at it like that too, um, there is there's one there's one moment in this film that I've never been able to figure out. And I'd like I've seen this film three or four times now. And I've never understood. I don't know if you guys ever picked up on this, but there's a scene in the beginning of the film where um she basically uh well, she has a turtle that roams around in the house and stuff like that. I don't know if anybody can shed some light on this part, but um it's the first time we get introduced to the turtle in the film when she kind of touches it with her foot and stuff and and uh, whatever, she does whatever. The camera focuses on the shell of the turtle and there's like blood on it there's like red stains on it and shit is that really yeah and i've never been able to figure out why that's in the film because it literally has nothing to do with anything like i don't understand but it makes oh, a yeah. point of it, it, it yeah, makes a point right. of zooming into it after she touches this she's like oh it's my turtle and then you know very typical 70s fashion where they they zoom in you know to the eyes but in this case it happens to be the turtle's back and there's a red stain on there implicate or you know saying that it's fucking blood and you're like okay and i remember thinking about this throughout the film going how's this going to play in and oh my god it's kind of a cool maybe it's like a red herring whatever it is you know kind of thing but it never goes right back to it though it like never has anything to do with anything i'm just like what the fuck do we do, they, like, do we know how the husband allegedly killed the dude Mm. well they they say that he was thrown off the bridge basically right so, okay, so because i because that's how they couldn't because <laughs> that's how they couldn't figure out like if it was suicide or murder or whatever because you know he was just floating in the he was in the water kind of thing right so Man, could be suicide it could, the next time i watch this but i mean but it's all the red hearings it's all the it's it all plays into the narrative too because there's actually even a point in the film where the husband even admits that he owned that he owed dubois a ton of money and stuff and i'm like well if he's gonna admit this in the middle of the film like you can't be responsible for killing this dude because that's literally the number one motive for murder is owing someone fucking money right like it's just too obvious that he's the that he's the killer and stuff like that or that he had something to do with you know with this this investor right like it, there's just moments in the film where i'm like what the fuck like it, i i think it's because i've seen it three or four times i'm like i'm starting to pick up on these these little notables and i'm like okay that doesn't make sense and why would you do this and that and then stuff and then and then when you get the reveal you're like okay yep and then you and then you and then you yeah. think back on the film and you're like well what the fuck like it's actually not written that well it really isn't written that well. And there's moments in the film that don't even make any fucking sense. There's actually a really funny part in this film too. I don't know if you guys picked up on this, but I picked up on this the last time I watched it too. And it made me laugh. There's a scene where she has the cassette tape and she throws it into the water. But if you mm -hmm. look at the way that scene is shot, she's literally nowhere near the water. Like the rocks extend all the way to the, all the way to the road. And they've got that, um, that whole kind of, um, that whole barrier, you know what I'm, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like probably 30, 40 feet to the water, right? It's just all rocks because the uh, the tide's out. And it's funny because she just kind of like nonchalantly throws it in the water and it sinks in the water and shit like that. And, the, and it, it, it kind of pans in the way it's shot. Like she's literally nowhere near the water. I'm just like, oh my God, that's so funny. <laughs> it's just, it just feels so amateurish to me. But again, that's the product of watching the film. Like, you know, close to a handful of times you pick up on shit. So 
Like this every was time. only my second time, and I thought it was okay the first time. Mm-hmm. You know, the last time I rated this film, man, I mean, I I couldn't remember. So when I typed it into Letterbox, you know, your previous rating comes up, and I was like, damn, holy shit. So, yeah. That's kind of a little bit of a spoiler, but uh, for myself, rating wise, but I mean, overall, it's not, it's not one of the worst giallos i've ever seen i just don't think it's like a top tier one at all yeah it's not bad it's not really bad but there's just these things that it just really don't make sense i, I think it's just almost too slow paced for its own good um there's just yeah. not enough interesting things like that you have this really dark narrative and i feel like you know there's moments where you know it, it goes into that territory and stuff like that but you know again it, it's not it's not mind-blowing with the reveal um it's kind of standard wise but uh and it's just such a tame film it's such a tame tame film which um which i I feel like you know he took what he you know some of the ideas that he had in this film and then he's like well i can definitely one up that and maybe two up that in the next films and stuff and i feel like he did you know narrative wise and uh you know you know even violence wise and stuff shit so but yeah, we'll I agree. Movies. I don't think it's a bad movie, but I don't think it's like really like there's not it's not really I don't think it's really exceptional or stands out in any way. Like the score I was okay. I'm like I'm really about the flair with a lot of GL movies. Like I want that like that energetic, like hyped up score. Like I want the violence. Hmm. And I, I like this music too. Yeah, like I thought it was I thought it was okay, but it like it's not something like I'm like remembering or like wanting to go and like find and listen to like it was shot well but like there's like nothing eye popping about it or there's like no memorable scenes or shots that will like really like really remind me of it or like any like remarkable scenes it just it was fine mm-hmm. yeah um i don't know what else i mean without giving everything away about the film um, Try not to spoil these ones. So, you guys, got anything else? No, we go into ratings. Yeah. Okay. Um, JP, why don't you go first? Yeah, the forbidden photos of a lady above suspicion. I, I dig this one. I, I really do like it. And uh, one thing in general with uh, Italian films from the seventies, specifically, I love the architecture of like just the houses and you know stuff like that it it always it, it's always cool because it it's everybody looks rich <laughs> yeah. in these movies you know what I yeah. mean? and uh i always like the fancy sort of like vibes of like italian films um of the of this era and uh yeah i like that about this one too um also one other thing that um we didn't mention is i sort of like how the the whole like picture thing uh comes up and then you know her dominique friend is like i don't remember no picture and and i like that sort of almost gives me like the you know not believing the woman type crazy woman thing Uh, Mm -hmm. it kind of interesting uh but anyway uh last time i watched this i think i gave it a six and a half i'm gonna give it a seven this time all right so i'll say it yeah you know i don't mean to bang out too hard but i just think like it's just very average it's, it's not the worst thing i've ever seen but it's not something like i'm ever i really see myself reusing anytime soon i'm gonna go to five and a half yeah i'm actually at the same rating five and a half on this one that's exactly what i, I had rated and i was like you know what i feel like about the same on this one Again, it's not a bad film. I just feel like it's maybe just slightly above average kind of thing. I think the way like how I always end up watching the films like back to back to back like influences how I end up rating them. Yeah, I mean, it's possible. Yeah, it's hard not to when you're dealing with like, you know, the same director and the same two stars in each film. (laughs) Like it's just like almost the perfect blend to just do that. You know, it's like, hey, this one's here and this one's here and kind of thing. So I watched this one second. (sighs) Oh, fuck. It's so weird. (laughs) <laughs> first. i watched the last one first weird that's ah, weird man but this is a great example of what we were talking about before of like of a filmmaker if you go to the start and then and then watch his films kind of in sequence like how he kind of elevated and, and got it, it was a little bit different you know 
like i feel like if you watch the third one first then you watch this one last you're like oh fuck, he just he regressed but actually in 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 reality he actually got better given the time yeah. that came out right so anyways yeah that's the uh the forbidden photos of a lady above suspicion from 1970. <laughs> all right so getting into the second film from 1971 and it is called death walks on high heels uh yeah or like, death stocks in high heels or death stocks yeah typical italians right <laughs> the headers are always different than the actual titles i love uh, it like when just you know you're in for a banger when the title on the screen doesn't match what's on the cover right right uh, what like did, said, you, did you guys watch the english or italian versions Oh, that's the English ones English. on both. Yeah. The, yeah, these are both actually shot in English. I did too. Okay. I wasn't yeah. sure. I never know, man. Because sometimes yeah. they're not shot in English. No, these I ones mean, are, of I think all three of these I, movies were. Rule of thumb, I always do English unless it's like one thing like I always particularly do in Italian is deep red. But for most things I think I just do in English. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, the 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 streaming version is the Italian versions. Like it, uh, both places I looked for streaming was the Italian versions, and then I ha I actually have the old check discs for for this set, so I I decided to pop those in to see if there was the English cut on there. I think I do too. Actually, I've got the check disc for these, but pretty fucking sure. Um, I, th I thought I owned the box set, but yeah, it was the Killer Dames box that I was thinking of. All right. I never did pick up this one. I had all three of these. Uh, like I said before, this one also starring Simone Andrew and Nevis Narvaro. Um, it's also got Frank Wolf in it. He's in a ton of fucking Italian films. Luciana Rossi's in this also. Uh, if you're very familiar with watching like spaghetti westerns and, and uh, you know, Italian crime films, Pelleggi films. You'll recognize all these people are in they're in every fucking movie <laughs> right so um death walks on high heels synopsis after a french stripper is harassed by a man who wants a cache of diamonds stolen by her late father she flees to england in the company of a doctor but danger follows um this is kind of a bit of a crazy narrative yeah yeah i i just like the fact that like your coley had his wife playing a stripper <laughs> i just find i just find that funny dude like this one was really cool i liked all those voyeurism shots and i really dug this like both the scores they use in this like the guitar one and then there was like the different one when the guy was like looking at her through the telescope right right yeah well the first thing you notice about this film it starts out um just like like the previous film with a bang like it's got like this kind of dark moment but in this one we get like this dude getting this throat slit in the beginning of the film and you know this one just has an abundance of close up of eyes and shit in this band. It's like so 70s with the zooming in on the eyes and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, th this one's got a little bit of effects and shit. And right away, you're like, oh shit, he already amped up the violence and the gore or the blood and stuff like that for this film. That's like the first thing you see yeah, in this film. There's some really nasty, like, um, I don't even want to, I don't even want to say death scenes, but just like violent scenes in this. Yeah. Like it's not like typical, like the way it's done, it's not even typical. It's like, just like, oh, it's like nasty. Right. Right. It, it really kind of is. Yeah. Um, you know what I, what I was thinking when I was rewatching this film was one thing about this movie that you don't see done in a lot of other giallos is the usage of like contact lenses, you know, like, because in the seventies, you know, it, it's not just giallo, it's just seventies films in general, where they do the, you know, the zoom in on the eyes and stuff like that. It's a very common thing within filmmaking. And, but I'm surprised that contact lenses weren't a bigger, you know, plot point in, in these giallos and these narratives in, you know, from this time period, because it just seems like something that should have been utilized a little bit more. I don't know if that's just me, if I'm just tripping or whatever, but I just, I was thinking about it. I'm like, you don't really see the usage of contacts and stuff that, that often in movies but just something i thought of what do you guys think no yes context kind of yeah they, I, I, honestly i didn't know contacts were i didn't know when they were invented yeah but it's all i always find it like interesting when i like when i see it in a film from like the 70s or something because i mean i got contacts when i was in like third or fourth grade and right. i remember oh. like people were like like they seemed like 
no <laughs> like i don't know but it just seems like something that they you could because it changes like especially when you have a mask on like you got like a balaclava or whatever and all you see is the eyes but if you're you've got color contacts in there like it changes the whole structure of your face like you just that's what mm-hmm. you see is that person right but i'm surprised it wasn't utilized more it's just such a simple it's such a simple thing to do that it just wasn't used a lot i'm surprised i just i just mm-hmm. thought it was kind of notable but such a basic easy thing to do but yeah that was kind of cool um so yeah so what's uh so i say to what are your thoughts on this one death walks on high heels i like this one this one um i think it amped up a lot of my complaints from from the last one i i don't think it, this one's like amazing or anything but it had some really cool cinematography um i was a bit much more a bigger fan of the music in this one uh there's like a lot of the vo- i like really like the voyeurism uh shots a lot and I kind of liked what that like spoiling where it went with like how they like the voyeurism tied into the salute, like the resolution of this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I always kind of like it like this. I always kind of like seeing these movies that like share DNA with stuff like the rear window and like how it just like, it's like it, that's exactly what I've written down too. Yeah. It's, it's, like, yeah, it's just like, it's such a good, like it's just, it's such like, it's, it's such an interesting way to like, introduce a character and like when you don't know who's behind the lens either it makes it even cooler mm-hmm. there's a couple of re- and then there's like the red herring they throw in by like using the same like the same shots right uh, with another character but yeah. yeah overall i thought this one was definitely more of an improvement i felt like it was much stronger direction um i thought the performance from the i, I don't know his name the guy that i kind of had an issue with the last movie i thought this was his best performance of the three i liked his character i liked his character in this one where he was more of like more instead of being like the antagonist he was more of like not really the protagonist but he was more of just like a supporting character in this one Mm -hmm. and i thought that suited him a lot better i like the like idea that um (laughs) it just seemed like like harassing her own movie i'm getting that confused with the third movie i'm sorry um uh but this guy i liked this performance in this one the best so i definitely remember that like with with him him being set up at the beginning yeah, and her like going to this island, and I like that setting too. Um, there was a lot of really like cool uh, moments where she was just like around the house alone, and it was like using like the seaside wind to its advantage to like kind of like set that like moody night scene that's like always a little scary. Mm-hmm. So he definitely made better use of his surroundings in this one too, and like using the sound to be more of like a character and to like soak into atmosphere. Yeah, I, I really dug this one yeah aesthetically this one is like it's a way better looking film but it's you know you you know when you have those type of settings you might as well utilize that kind of thing but i I just think that this one is it's got it, it's got so many characters and there's so many twists and turns and stuff in this one and and it's got a better pace the soundtrack's really cool to it and too and but it just it keeps you interested because you know the whole diamonds thing like is you know is she involved with this thing it's like you know who is like there's so many aspects in this film that i thought were, like when the reveal happens i thought was really cool because you, you kind of reflect yeah. back into the narrative the, the, and you're the, like oh shit you're like oh shit that, yeah you're like oh shit that's kind of cool that you know this guy or this person was involved and, and this is why he was doing this shit and like th- like there's some really interesting aspects like how um with the doctor right the, the doctor not ironically enough is an optometrist in this film right hence going back to the mm. whole contacts thing and stuff like that yeah. it's kind of a cool thing but that eye stuff is gnarly too oh dude I, I have to look away every time i watch it i can't, oh. I, can't <laughs> I can't handle it man because it's literally this dude's digging in this guy's eye and i'm like oh my god i can't oh handle god, it it, yeah. it makes me fucking shiver dude like i'm just like no way man but i like that whole because in the, because they don't just show you this shit. like they they break it all down in the end as to why this guy's like this it, it's really cool actually and there's a lot of people involved and there's a lot of it, it's just a it's just a better written film than forbidden photos photos in my opinion and it's a lot more fun and you know like i said they amped up the violence in this and that kind of that kind of works for me a little bit i like the more violent kind of giallos uh more violent yeah, uh maybe sleazy sure. kind of thing but this one just has a better pace it has more interesting characters and has a better mystery to it and I think the payoff is really does work in this. That's what really sells it for me because when they, you know, in typical Giallo fan, they literally break everything down in the end of the film, right? They tell you exactly what's going on. It's, it always kind of makes me laugh. I know JP, I think you had a hard time, um, kind of accepting that in Giallo's when we first started watching these, you're like, fuck, they have to break everything down word for word, but it, it does kind of like help it. Though. 
it does help though sometimes because it makes you it, it makes feels it's it's it feels like an old like universal like 40s trope <laughs> they always just, do it so cool though i like it one it's of the best thing but we'll get into it in the third film but one of my favorite parts is when the dude steps out of the out of the out of the darkness and he's like yes I killed her out of revenge for your sister. And I'm just like, oh my God, it's the most yellow moment in the fucking world right there, right? <laughs> I mean, the, the reveal of this movie, like, it, it's like, it's done in like such a different, like, tongue in cheek way. I like the way it was like almost back. cool. Like, it made me laugh. Dude, I know, man. It's crazy, right? Like, it, it, in the, it, like you said, going back to the way they shot it, and, like, from all these different angles and stuff, and you, you kind of you piece it together through these different angles and different shots and stuff and different characters uh views and shit and i'm like oh that's fucking cool that's really cool but it's just like to me when you finish this film after watching forbidden photos like man that one was so much better like so much better so this this one has a lot more flair and a lot more style and like those like those like scenes of like someone just like watching her and the score cranking and like it just like focused through like the like the telescope lens through her house i just love that shit and like that's the kind of thing that's gonna like i'm that's gonna stick with me about this movie yeah. maybe two years i'm like oh yeah this one's got the cool like telescope shots i'm gonna watch this one yeah yeah you know it, it has like the most movie thing ever is like when when um the this uh, one remind me of body double from uh brian de palma right oh yeah yeah uh, when her, um, I guess, you know, old boyfriend or whatever, the Simone Andrew shows up and he's all shit face drunk. And, and then the cops like, up on the dude. Yeah. He's blowing, <laughs> and then the cop just like, Hey, he's got, he's drinking fucking tea. Right. And he cuts up this lemon. He gives him some this lemon shit. And he's like, goes and pukes on this dude and shit. And he's like, and then, but then like two minutes later, he's like completely fine. And sober. I'm like, Oh, it's such a movie thing to do. Right. The, this movie gets like extremely British by the end. Right. <laughs> it, does like, it, it feels like a, it feels like a, like a fucking uk film <laughs> i mean i mean that's where they are right they go to england right. and shit, so it, yeah, it does yeah, kind of make yeah. sense but it, it's it's just anytime you have like the the inspectors yeah stuff, yeah the scotland yard inspectors yeah you know, it's like yeah yeah All but right. dude the threat the like the the comedy of the like throw up just feels so weird mm-hmm. well that that's what i noticed when you watch this one and the next film back to back, like you notice that this movie just definitely has a lot more color to it. The characters are a lot more, they're a little bit more flamboyant and a little bit more fun and stuff like that. And and there is this element of underlining comedy throughout the whole film. And and in the next one too, there's like a bunch of moments where you might even miss the first time, but it's like, I was, I found myself laughing a lot, like in a good way though, you know? And I'm like, that's fucking hilarious, man. So I, I feel like, he started to have a little bit more fun with the films. Like he was trying to make this, you know, I, I feel like in the first film, there's not really a lot of comedy. Ele- and, and I'm not saying these movies are supposed to be like comedy giallos and shit like that, which I'm sure they exist like comedic giallos. I don't know. I like a that, little dash of flavor. I feel like yeah. there's some like comedy and stuff like deep red. Right. Like there's just these moments where the characters say things and it's just like, what the fuck? <laughs> like i don't know if it's intentional well, even when i was watching uh bird with the crystal plumage uh the other day where he goes to talk to that artist and like he's eating like cat or something <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it's like so off-putting like well, comedy wise like, i always just thought it was funny like he just like finds like this guy's house he's like yeah he's paint <laughs> stuff he's like yeah here's a ladder <laughs> right like there's the moment in, the, in this film where I, I i always call um andrew the frenchie in this film so like Frenchie when he's fighting the doctor and he just winds up and fucking wails him right in the balls. Like he literally kicks him in the balls while he's down on the ground. I'm like, that's fucking hilarious, dude. <laughs> like who does that? I don't know if you guys got that, man, but I always laugh at that part. It just makes me laugh. But yeah, it's just brutal. You kick someone on when they're on their back, like in the balls. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> that's nasty shit, dude. It's it like shooting up. people in the dick. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, no, this one, this one uh, is pretty good too. Um, the narrative was a bit, ki- well, first of all, watching all three of these movies with the same fucking actors and the same color hair. I keep having to remind myself <laughs> what happens in each movie and like who plays yeah. what in what movie. I don't, yeah. I don't have a problem with that. I can remember yeah, these movies I like kept totally individually. For a second, like I like, I knew like that, like the, like discount Ivan in this one was like, the guy right at the beginning and like that she runs away from but then right. like as i was like remembering what he's doing i kept lending that he was like a reporter that was following around like no it's the wrong fucking movie idiot mm-hmm. yeah like i don't know man there's just so much flair like there definitely is the moments of comedic relief in this man it's like i feel like when frenchie steals the cop car 
that part's funny too because he's just like runs yeah. out of the cops like oh uh, <laughs> yeah. he's, he's taking the car and yeah they're so up, lighthearted about it right and he does it kind of in a funny way and then and later on he calls about he's like yeah don't worry I'll, I'll return the car and just the way he says yeah. it, they're just like fuck this is so because they're not even pissed off about it that's what's so funny about the part <laughs> just, like, they just accepted that he stole the car I'm like, oh my god, and it's then there's that like moment. An insult to like go to their boss who like the Frenchman stole our car. Yeah, and it's like the part where they go back to the back to the house there, and um, and the cops like he's trying to open the gate and he's totally doing it wrong, and the other guy just reaches and he slides it over, and he's like, and he kind of looks at him. And I'm just like, wow, what the fuck? But the <laughs> cops aren't like they're not like the stupid like the dumbass cops from like Last House on the Left. They're not like that stupid. It's just they have these moments where they just. They're like goofy, smart and stupid. Yeah, it's like so stupid, funny, man. I'm just like, oh my god, that's hilarious. But yeah, they definitely throw those in on purpose. But yeah, yeah, they have like the most red hearing character ever. Like the the fucking blondie kid. That guy's hair fucking drives me nuts in this film too. Like he's just always around and like fucking. He's just always looking creepy and shit. Man, that dude. Is this the one with the little Asian kids? Or no. Is that the the next one? That's the next one. <laughs> That's the next film. Oh my god, yeah, that was so out of left field. I know. That's what I was just thinking about. Dude, I love the part in the in the next film where the kid where he's like eating his breakfast and there's this like little Asian girl on his shoulders and she's like eating a <laughs> banana and shit. It's so fucking <laughs> funny to me, man. It's just so random. You're like, what the fuck's with the Asian kids in this? But they I mean, yeah. Do you think it's, that it's... was like some producer's kids that were just around? <laughs> it like... feels like it. <laughs> yeah, because they kept calling him uncle and it's like this white dude and shit. But I mean every kid, you know, we all had those people in our families, right? They yeah. were like aunt and uncles, but they're not related at all. Yeah. So what are your, I don't really want to get, but I feel like there's like this, there's this whole, it, 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 it's kind of very reflective of like a psycho moment. You guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, right, definitely know what you're talking about. <laughs> I felt right. like this movie like leaned more into the crime, like the like almost like a crime thriller at the end. And the yeah, end you got diamonds like, involved. Anytime you yeah. Get oh it's totally cool. crime like, it's totally crime like but the, I, the way like he wrapped it up like like where like he like he does the grid it was like crime is cool and then like they do like their little jello wrap up and i thought that was awesome right <laughs> i just like the way the guy gets blinded like when they explain that away and shit i was like oh that's that crazy. was brutal oh it's brutal man it's like totally brutal but i like how all the, there's a lot of characters involved in this movie man it's crazy yeah so but uh yeah like the fucking like the doctor's wife in this film like her death scene is pretty brutal right what's what yeah. happened to her she gets killed on, on bed, but she gets like killed mad. on the bed with the yeah. knife and oh, he, yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, i was yeah. talking about that scene is nasty like yeah dude it, butts, sir? it's so violent and sadistic too because like he doesn't just kill her but he like slashes her up and like slits her throat he slits her tits like her arm like he just fucks her right up dude and it's like it's not even done in like kind of like the like over the top gory italian way it's done in more of like a toned down realistic way and it all uh, it's yeah there it is something very off-putting about that scene right it's like holy shit and it's it's just it's so violent in in like in this narrative and you're just like holy fuck i really like that part man it's crazy because like there is moments in this film where are kind of shocking because like there's characters that die in this film and when they die and like how they die and like you're just like what the fuck like mm -hmm. it's it's kind of a batshit narrative and like i really like that the payoff is worth it in the end and stuff like because there's it's so it's kind of genius in a sense but there was a lot of thought put into like incorporating all these characters and and how it all went down and stuff and it just didn't play out like i think if you're trying to figure it out while you're watching it doesn't really play out like how you think it would in a mm -hmm. sense i i think it's kind of cool like with the, the whole doctor character i think it's actually really neat what they did so yeah i really enjoy this movie i think it's fun yep um anything else i'm good yeah i'm good all right so i'll say what do you got on this one uh i think this one was pretty good i'd watch this one again but I don't think it was as strong as any of the movies you watched last week. So I'll give this one a seven and a half. Um, yeah, my go. Um, I'm actually in at the same rating, seven and a half on this one too. I think it's pretty, I think it's pretty solid. Definitely way stepped up from the first film, but yep. yeah. Yeah. In all, um, in, in all aspects, actually, I just, the pacing so much better in this film. It just makes it for such a more enjoyable watch. Yeah. 
And I think this might even be the longest one, isn't it? This is it the is. longest. This is yeah. the longest one. And I think it's the best paced one. Yeah, this is the longest film with the best pace. And it, that usually is not the narrative on this podcast. Usually the longer <laughs> films are always the one that are fucking, they're dragging it down. So, yeah. Okay, GP. Yeah. Um, yeah, I agree that it's uh, more fast paced. Um, I thought that the, the fun thing about this one is just how zany the, the story is. Um, especially like once you get to the end and everything's laid out um I, i'm actually a little bit higher than both of you guys i i came in at an eight yeah i was kind of leading towards that too it's like seven and a half eight i think it's pretty appropriate for that but all right awesome so that's uh death walks on high heels from 1971. <laughs> All right, so getting into the third and final film here on episode 244, we're going to 1972. Did anybody have this movie on their top 10 list when we did 72? No. Or did we do 72 way too, like, even before this even got released? I don't remember. Uh, I think we did 72 probably before it was released, maybe. Yeah, it might have been pretty obscure at the time, maybe, no, like, on physical um, media. This was on physical media because I remember, like, watching that. When you guys were doing the 72 show, hmm. I was watching a bunch of 72 movies because I was just watching a bunch of Giallos at the time. And I remember watching this and I, I only watched like 25 movies. Mm-hmm. But I had my own 72 list and this didn't make my top 10. Okay. All right. So yeah, 1972's Death Walks at Midnight. Synopsis. During during a drug-fueled photo shoot. That's, that's a mouthful. During a drug-fueled photo shoot. A model witnesses a brutal murder in the apartment opposite hers. And it's forced to become an amateur sleuth to unravel to unravel the mystery. So, like right there, man, you you totally get that Hitchcock rear window type feel right there from that narrative. From that, uh, I mean, it's kind of the same setup in a sense, but it really isn't though. This one, this one is just fucking bad shit, dude. Like this, like the last like forty five minutes of this movie is so crazy. Like with twists and turns, it's like a fucking roller coaster, man. There's so much shit that's going yeah, on. There's and, a lot of red herrings in this movie. A lot of red herrings, and then it just goes crazy in the story, and it's like it's fucking it's nuts. So um, the, again, uh, the whole like gauntlet stabby thing, it feels like so fucking eighties or nineties. Mm-hmm. It's so interesting that it that it. It just it like that type of weapon just didn't feel seventies to me. I thought it was interesting. Yeah, that was pretty yeah. The, wep- too. the the weapon is fucking in that again. You know, going to you know watching these movies in sequence and like the first one's pretty tame. The second one's got its fucking nasty moments. This one is brutal, man. Like it's yeah, because that 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 is like a fucking medieval torture device, dude. Right. That is pro- it's probably one of the nastiest <laughs> weapons I've ever seen in a giallo, man. To be honest, and like he that one scene where. I mean, well, it's, yeah, normally it's, it's a gory. fucking straight razor, dude. Yeah, he like <laughs> pounds these girls' faces into hamburger. <laughs> dude, it's yeah, like so doesn't funny. that feel like something that would be in like the '80s slasher craze? Like some, yeah, some it's type fucking. Of, like, you know what makes that scene like so great? You know what makes that scene so great is when you get the reveal of like why he killed that person and stuff. It's fucking awesome, dude. It's like just so like yeah, you know, you got to get that revenge type deal. Um, one thing I will note about this film, it was actually written by Sergio Corbucci like interesting i was like <laughs> fucking blown away by that man i'm like corbucci wrote this fucking movie like what is interesting is i feel like corbucci was like the first one to really like amp up the violence in spaghetti westerns yeah big time well i mean corbucci's spaghetti westerns are some of the more violent ones yeah right? like that was like that's so, i mean like he's like what stood out to me is like the earliest i was seeing of like them getting like really more violent and bloody right so like yeah. maybe that's like influence like on like the torture devices and just like how the film was presented. It could be. I mean, yeah, because he I mean, he had done before this film, like obviously Django and Navajo Joe, the Hellbenders, uh, Great Silence, what, 68, 69, something like that. Yeah, 68, like uh, the, the 60s, Mercenary, yeah. Specialist, Companeros, like, fuck, man, this guy, he he had his violent ass fucking movies, man. Well, yeah, Django, I, Django is real, like, I always forget how violent Django is. Right. But all those movies are, man. The Hellbenders is, man. Have you seen Hellbenders? Navajo Joe? Like, no, I haven't seen. Joe. I've only seen about half of the movies you named. Okay, so like, well, you've obviously seen the Great Silence. But, yeah, I've seen yeah, the Mercen- Great Silence. I've seen the Mercenary. I've seen Django. Specialist is really good, man. Like, all these movies have nice releases too, man. That's the cool thing about Corbucci's movies. Yeah, but I mean, after that, he kind of got out of doing spaghetti westerns, and I don't think I've ever seen a movie after that. 
that he ever did like Companeros, I think was the last film that he well maybe not the last spaghetti one but one of the more bigger ones but but uh yeah but I I just couldn't believe it like I saw it in the credits I was like I never noticed it before that Corbucci had wrote this and I was like what the fuck but you know going back to like his roots and violence and shit like that I was like wow makes a lot more sense why this is definitely the nastiest and more and most violent of the three I mean yeah. shit dude like there's a fucking great dummy you don't get to see the dummy <laughs> actually hit the ground but like there's a great dummy scene in this film but the end result was brutal because if you actually there's literally brains hanging on the ground yeah there's chunks of fucking brains i was like holy <laughs> fuck it's fucking violent <laughs> as hell man but this whole like i said the whole last 45 minutes of this movie is just there's so many twists and turns and so much going on and so much violence and just craziness man this one's awesome dude like this is he just kept amping it up man i i really i like the the premise of this film too because it plays off that whole thing like that whole rear window thing i saw something across there or did i because in this case she's literally doing drugs for this basically this article right that the, this dude's writing kind of thing that that article thing it's like, like experiments made me laugh. Yeah. That, like the whole movie that like so this like like article comes out that's like apparently like a tabloid article that like you're not actually supposed to believe like the yeah. whole movie be like you must still be on drugs yeah but it, it kind of plays into like you know the narrative of today's world too like how everything is just but they but they openly admit too like the journalist openly admits like we write this shit and we fabricate the fucking hell out of it just to sell shit like they don't they have no morals they don't give a shit about what people believe or don't believe they're just they're gonna make up their story the way they want it to to be to sell right it's just like how today is like nobody gives a shit like, about they the just, headlines yeah they just want the headline they want the big juicy story whether it's true or not nobody even gives a shit it's like it's like the whole fucking you know the cnn mentality kind of thing let's break a story without it actually being true kind of thing right but the more clicks, I, I, the better. I love that commentary in this film. It's they, they just don't give a shit. It's like, we're going to yeah. sell this to the masses, and that's what it is. It doesn't matter what the He's actual like, story the is. He's like, you're the editors. Like, you yeah. believe this? This is for mass consumption. No, but, it, but it's such a weird narrative, right? Like, she, they're just, like, testing these weird drugs on people and, and writing stories about them. Like, it's so yeah, fucking I, like, weird. That made me laugh. Like, yeah. <laughs> Like, who comes up with this idea? Like, obviously, Corbucci wrote the fucking, but it's just such a. I'm going to give you drugs. I'm going to write and I'm going to put your picture in the paper. But they play off the whole (laughs) angle. Like, you know, she's fucking crazy. She's obviously super crazy. Or, and the fact that she was on drugs. Like, of course, the cop's not going to believe anything she ever says because, you know, did you actually see a murder because you were on drugs? And then, like, everything throughout the film is like that typical shit where the cop doesn't believe a damn thing she says because, you know, you were on drugs at this one time. And every time they look into something, it's not, it, you know, it's not there. Like, like there's this moment where they go to the apartment there's nothing in the apartment kind of thing she's fucking crazy is she crazy or is she actually on drugs you know it's like it's that whole angle throughout the whole film which i enjoy but this one's got a great pace it's got great characters it's got great villains like i love the look of the dude that that we see her in the beginning kill the 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 girl you know it's kind of funny now that i'm thinking he reminds me of no country for old men dude right it's it's funny you say that because i have it written down as you like it something just like clicked in my head yeah like as you said corbucci wrote this Mm -hmm. and i thought like you know this movie kind of ends like a western right it does that's crazy i mean i mean it completely makes fucking sense right but but like i wonder if the coen's brothers that well they probably have seen this movie i'm sure because they were big I, I'm sure they were big Giallo fans growing up and stuff like that, but but just having that like this type of character, just seeing that, like you can totally correlate that to old country or no country for old men. Like that dude's creepy as shit in no country for old men, too. <laughs> but you but yeah. but you know, like when I look at this like this guy's look is awesome, but don't you see Klaus Kinski in that role of this dude? For some odd reason, man, I like every you, time like, I rework the way the character looked. Yeah, like yeah, like, with that hair. Was, yeah, I could no. just see with Kinski. Like, I don't know what the fuck. Like, I could just see Kinski in this like very sadistic. Like, well, it's different because w- what we see in the beginning of the film with this character, we you know, we we're kind of led to believe that this is going to be the villain kind of thing, right? But it doesn't really work out like that because it's a giallo. But yeah I, I really like the look of that man and the weapon is fucking gnarly like but this one just shit dude when it starts to get into like the third act in this one <laughs> like the, the reveal in this shit is is like it's fucking bad shit man i don't know man there's something about i love this movie i think it's great 
yeah it's pretty fun there's just so much going on i wish i could just talk about the whole fucking thing just ruin the whole movie but obviously i'm not going to do that for people because i I really highly recommend watching this film because uh it's good man and nevis navarro looks so good in this film fuck man her hair is nice and long oh i thought she's excellent but uh yeah she she's good in all these movies man like she's just such a screen yeah i like her yeah 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 she's cool and I mean, like I said, I've seen her in a lot of movies, a lot of westerns and stuff, and she always kind of steals the show in every scene because, like, she's just so. I'm kind of interested to, look at. to like check out some of the westerns she's in. You name like definitely the Big Gun Down. That's been on my list for a long. Oh, time. Oh yeah, that's a great one. That's probably one of the best ones that she was in. The 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 Ringo films are all, they're they're decent. They're not like top tier. Um, I have the I've seen the Ringo movies. Yeah, like yeah, you know what I'm talking about, right? Like they're yeah. not like yeah, they're okay. They're but okay. She's, she's great in them, but like, yeah. but yeah, the Big Gun Down is definitely something you got to check out. That's one of her better ones so i need to watch more westerns yeah like you would i think you would definitely like them like especially like if you're de- behind like italian movies and westerns Giallo, like, oh i grew up now. dude i grew up watching westerns with my grandfather but yeah. i just don't know what i what I, you know I, I didn't know what i was watching the title yeah. stuff but you'd I definitely be into some spaghetti westerns i think he he fucking literally would watch westerns all day every day bro <laughs> i've seen so many that are probably like lost in my memory that like yeah if i saw them it'd probably jar something but yeah i, I, I i've always liked westerns but i just don't watch them yeah and yeah i grew up watching them too man that's why i'm a huge fan of westerns in general so so i've I wanted- only really gotten into them last couple of years honestly oh wow well. So something I wanted to to bring up about this film that I've noticed every time I've watched it, and I, I always I think it just kind of slips in my mind until I'm watching it again, but is um I, I like I don't know my history with this. I don't know if this is like a very early um example of doing this in a film, or if there's earlier examples. I have no idea if it, if it was done before this, it probably was, but uh there's a couple scenes in this film, especially the one we were just talking about with that gnarly fucking spike love and shit like that, where he's killing this chick like he's stabbing her in the fucking neck and the face and it just but he's spraying blood all over the camera right like all over the lens like he like literally is spraying the camera and i'm just wondering if if this is one of the earlier examples of using that that type of technique in, for the film or so had do it you, dumb, you, you know what i mean like intentionally spread like getting it on the camera yeah like i mean there's there's the, 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 there's a point in this film where the, like the literally the whole screen goes red because the, the blood literally covers what we're seeing right and it's like streaming down the actual camera like it's like you know all on the camera you know when you remember bro. when you're watching films <laughs> and like you're wide like people are getting killed and there's blood splatter on the on the camera and stuff yeah, like that yeah. well yeah. this one it literally covers the camera in that scene it, they show it throughout the film a couple different times but um just I mean, it's definitely an earlier example because I, I feel like, like Herschel I- Gordon and Lewis would do some shit like that. I don't remember if, if Gordon Lewis ever did utilize the blood on the camera angle. I have no idea. Like, I'm just trying to like, if you guys could think of any earlier, because I mean, this is 1972. Yeah, it's so obviously, early. obviously became yeah. pretty, it became pretty prominent in most in films like examples, the last 25 years. Like, yeah, I was going to say all the most time. examples I can think of are like more modern movies. But I just yeah. thought it was very notable because it just seems like this, if this was one of the earlier ones, it's like, fuck, you know, I mean, people might have saw it and like, wow, that's a really cool thing to do. You know, it's just, yeah. it's so, it's so gnarly and violent. And it's like, it's not even just blood splatter in this one. It's, it's like, it's painting the entire screen. It's crazy yeah. how, how much blood is on there. It's just nuts. But it, I just it's a that was fascinating real. question yeah because like you often wonder like what the, when the first time something was done on on film yeah and it's not even like it's just one little fucking drop of blood like they they go all out on this one just like all the kills and stuff basically so um but yeah getting into you know kind of the comedic elements of the film <laughs> there's this scene in the film where she's kind of escaping with this dude on the ro- this guy picks her up on the road and stuff like that and of course he's very typical. Is that the put out or get out guy? Oh, yeah. that was funny. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And, like this guy picks her up and of course turns into a fucking rapist and he's trying to like throw her in the back <laughs> of his van and shit. He's oh, but, but listen, he, everybody with every fucking, fucking, fucking dude her. is a rapist in 1972, he, bro. He fucking <laughs> calls her a bull dyke. I don't know if you guys catch oh, yeah. that. But he's like, yeah, and he ha- kicks he, her in the, He's like, how did I get a bull dyke right? in here? And I'm like, blah. I'm like, bull oh my dyke. god, who fucking says bull dyke? That is the funniest shit ever. I laughed at that too. She like kicks her in the nuts or something, right? Yeah, it, it's so funny. And then, of course, she, you know, flags down a cop and shit like that. Yeah, but it's, it was, I was laughing. It's just like the casual, like the casually, like the cat, like 
the audacity of this woman just be like, I'll just hit you. I know. It's like so out of left field too. Like it's like it's like the it's like those, you know, those uh those men hating fucking female directors these days and shit like that are making these just hating on men in their films and stuff like that. It's like it's kind of like that moment. It's like every guy in the films are just a big piece of shit. But this <laughs> is what this guy is. He's like the biggest piece of shit. Like, you yeah. know, you'd expect that you expect this character to be in one of those movies where they're just hating on men because not every guy is a fucking rapist. Like, come on, man. It's ridiculous, right? But I just, I think this that's guy was. Yeah, but this guy was. But he literally had a bed in the back of his van. Yeah, that was awesome. He just, like, opened the door. I, you know, I've always fucking wanted that. Dude, those vans are awesome, man. They're like, so cool. Like, like Ginger like Snaps. The, the, dude, like, everybody. Yeah, like, even in the 2000s, there was a bunch. Yeah. Like, having, like, a... And I go to drive-in a lot, too. Yeah. the fucking vans and shit that some of these people have are like so dope man i'm just like that would be so fucking cool i i missed out on that because i don't think it i feel like it'd be creepy now but <laughs> like right. if you're if you're in high school and you got a fucking van that's like furnished bro you're in i never had that <laughs> i did not yeah I'd be those fucking- were kind of already a thing of the past but that's not i was in high school yeah yeah, they weren't even like a thing when I was in high school either. But I mean, I they're, they're, they're pretty fucking awesome. Admit, Honestly, if you did have that in high school, you'd probably be like the man. Oh yeah, I feel like that was Let's just like a thing in movies. Let's no, see. I feel it like it. Ha- I feel like no. I actually the, no. We there was people around here that actually had those like old eighties. We used to call them like Chester Molester vans because it, it always it <laughs> but, always but just seemed like there cool. was some. You got to put like a decal out on the fucking side. Yeah, and you know you got you got to have big smoke clouds once in a while when you open the doors oh yeah definitely yeah, you, you know yeah there was always like, that dude rolling around that had like the flames on it and shit like that the pitch black one with right, the flames. yeah yep the little moon <laughs> the little moon fucking window and shit <laughs> it's fucking awesome yeah. man ah shit man it's awesome oh yeah there's like a fucking nasty dead cat scene in this film too like this dude like picks up uh, a cat and it's like fucking gnarled up oh is it like yeah he's like special needs dude is yeah. it the yeah. special needs dude yeah is that like this that, movie yeah, oh, yeah man my he's memory like, is going he's like, the weird, he's, he's he's like, like that really weird together they like it's tough to like because yeah so he's many one of people he's one of the guys that's at the uh at the, the or the um the institution i guess is what you want to call it because remember they go to see the dude that had actually uh-huh. killed that woman that they oh, that yeah, they yeah, think that right. was yeah, yeah, that yeah. they that Fuck. they think that she had seen but it turns out like this guy she didn't see this dude and they're like yeah. all confused they're like well that's the person that got killed in this in this part that you saw and blah 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 and yeah so that was kind of an interesting part but but yeah, no, that that cut that cat scene was just brutal. Like they just threw that into the film, and I was like, "Damn, that's a that cat is really gnarled up, man." I'm sure it was an accident uh, that the lady says. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure, and I'm like, yeah, and I actually laughed to myself. I'm like, yeah, because you know, every accident ends up with a cat getting its head basically decapitated <laughs> by a knife. I'm like, it's what the fuck? Up. Yeah, it's fucked up, man. But yeah, like yeah, going the, back to the I, comedy. I thought that the go ahead. Oh, I'm just gonna me, say, man. Me like, scusi, me scusi. She, she's me scusi, me scusi. We haven't done that at all. Yeah. Um, like she's she's called a fucking bull dyke in this movie. And there's another scene where she's in um she's in the office and she fucking opens up the door and she's she hits this guy right in the face and he's like, oh bitch. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, well, what would you? Do? What, what, I mean, like, what would you say? I mean, no, it's just funny. It's just funny. It's leading. Into, and then there's another part where she gets called a dumb broad. I'm like, oh my god, dude! It's like, was just, it fucking? Was, it was that actor's name Jeremy fucking Freeman? Yeah, exactly. He calls her a fucking dumb broad. I'm like, oh my god, this movie is so funny, dude! Like, just the, oh, just the dialogue is just so funny. But like, all those parts just come off as being so goofy, but like, not in a bad way though. You know, like it's not intentional. Like, oh, we're just gonna make these parts really funny and shit. It's just the way it's done. Yeah, I don't know. It's, funny it's just to funny me. to me. It's like the it's like the fucking it's like one of the villains that that dude with the with the blonde hair with the really fucking weird laugh. It's like almost like a cackle. Oh yeah, I didn't like, like that. It's like the pre, like it's like the, the predecessor to like the New York Ripper fucking Donald Duck. Dude. It's like, <laughs> I kind of remember thinking like nobody fucking laughs like that, dude. It's so out of control, man. It makes me laugh because it's just so bad. You're just like, oh my god, who fucking does that? <laughs> it's ridiculous, man. Uh, uh man. But yeah, I thought I, that the uh, sort of uh, psychic shit was kind of a cool addition. Yeah, it's different. It's different. Yeah, yeah, I, and I kind of like that sometimes. Where like, you know, it it, it adds a different level uh, level to it. You know, mm-hmm. with, with a geo- like, and I'm even like that with slashers. Sometimes I like a 
a nice like gimmick or something to sort of oh, do, just something, time the do something different for everything like yeah. gimmicks you miss like and this is always not everything has to be a masterpiece not everything has to be good right yeah like Again, this is what I love watching about, like watching Italian films and stuff. Sometimes it's just a translation, or sometimes it's just the way they deliver yeah. their lines and stuff. But there's a moment in the film where she she comes into her apartment, she answers the phone, and she's like, "Who is this?" <laughs> like, not a hello. Like, who is this? And I'm like, what the Dude, fuck? Like, do you ever notice the in movies like in general, like people often answer the phone weird and like don't say bye? They just like hang up the phone yeah. all the time. I know. Like, how do you know the conversation is done if you're not going to say bye or see you or whatever? Or yeah. Chars like, or something. Like, I'm always like later, but like they'll just be like, I'm coming over. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. There's actually one really clever moment in this film I thought was pretty cool, man, is when she's in the apartment and uh, I can't remember if she drops something or something happens or whatever, but she ends up unplugging the phone. And that, that moment's kind of, kind of interesting because then, you know, just right down the line, she ends up having to call that apartment. And of course she's not getting the call because she unfucking plugged the phone with her foot. And she, I thought that was actually really clever in the narrative. It was pretty interesting. You guys know what I'm talking yeah. about? Or just, yeah. Yeah, that, yeah. That's good writing. I actually like, I like moments like that in, in the, in films and stuff like that, that, that kind of makes sense, right? Like he, he, he yeah. didn't see it happen. Obviously if he did, he would have plugged it back in, but she didn't even realize she did it kind of thing. And like, it just comes off as being kind of real right like that, that could totally happen yeah so it's just those moments but it explains in a way why he's sitting in his apartment not answering his phone <laughs> right? right so yeah it's thoughtful writing it is thoughtful writing and i think and that's one thing i like with this film man like it's got a great pace it's, it's just got so much going on man i love i love her character um just the whole kind of rear window drug influence like you know psychic type shit that's going on it's got gnarly kills the soundtrack's fun in this one man everything about this movie is great like it rips by it rips by but i think like the whole end of this where it's just like everyone's scrapping and just like there's so oh much yeah like the fight and shit i was like holy this is like a different genre yeah, <laughs> yeah dude cool. it, it just goes it's, bad that's shit what i mean it's like a western and just even like the motivation like of like <laughs> It, it's like it's very it's not typical like like i feel like most um most giallos like the motive is like centered on passion mm -hmm. for the most part right or like survival like this is like more centered on, on just like revenge and like um basically just revenge and just like trickery and it just like reminds me more of like a western than it does in giallo yeah, because there is even a po moment in this film where one of the characters gets killed and the, and the guy admits that it was just basically revenge for this other killing and stuff like that. And it plays in perfectly because we're led to believe that this guy is the fucking main villain and shit like that. And I, I actually really like that about the film and it goes totally away from that, you know, and then something happens to him and it, there's just so many twists and turns in this movie. It's great. It's It's just a fun movie, man. It's great. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. But again, you know, it's hard to talk about like the second half of the film without giving anything away because, yeah, no, I know yeah. I really like this one, but, um, yeah, I don't know. Do you guys have anything else on Death Walks at Midnight? Do you want to? I, I think, have nothing uh, else think to we add. covered it. Okay, yeah, I this is definitely my favorite of the three, um, and uh, I think it always has been. Man, I, I just really like this film. I mean, really, what sells it for me is that fucking dummy. At the end, but I just can't get over how well, gory that is, left a smile on my face. Yeah, some of the kills in this movie are brutal, dude. Like it's fucking brutal, man. Like, man, it's awesome. A little bit sleazy. <laughs> it's got it's got some really fun moments. It's got some just there's moments in this film that I just I find myself laughing in such a good way. I'm just like, my God, dude. Like, I just can't believe how much he gets abused all all filmed by being called names and shit. Like <laughs> you just don't hear that in these movies, man. It's just so unique to this film. But uh, Death Walks at Midnight, this is by far um, my favorite one. I'm I'm coming in at a nine on this one. It, I really like this movie. It's great. Uh, GP. Um, okay. Yeah. Um. I I actually like the other one a little bit better, but they're they're really close. So I'm gonna give this one an eight as well. Cool. Um. I agree. I actually like the, uh, I actually like, um, high heels a bit better than this movie. I think that movie is more fine tuned and it's a little bit more memorable for me, but hmm. I think this one's still pretty good. Um, I'm going to give this one a seven. Really? Man, I'm surprised. I thought for sure that you'd like this one the most. 
That's crazy. I like it's it's the I swear it's the voyeurism shots for me, and I just like the music more than the other one. That it just like it leaves such mm. more of an impression on me. I just think the whole you know the whole reveal in this one is just so crazy like it's just because I, 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 I like the reveal in the other one better just because like it just seems so out of pocket and like i guess this one kind of had a genre shush too but just the way like it almost like i love the way the guy just like grins and just explained everything like a bond villain and it just like made me so happy <laughs> yeah yeah there's a lot going on in this movie there's a lot of characters a lot of explanation there's just a lot of things that have to tie in it's just it's such a busy reveal like it's probably one of the busier reveals like in giallo history man i don't know there's just so much going on it's crazy i love it it's just it just makes me smile i'm like damn corbucci like went to town on this shit yeah so. corbucci's cool i definitely want to like at least watch a, uh, a new movie or two by him this month mm -hmm. i'm definitely gonna rewatch the mercenary yeah that's a good movie there that's you really did Django. all right so yeah that is uh death walks at midnight from 1972 yeah all right well that's his uh episode 244 week two of Italian horror month here on the 22 shots of moves and horror podcast. If you didn't know what you're listening to, you do now, which would be weird and, because it's like the end of the show. So, <laughs> and uh, if you guys are watching any Italian horror month or Italian films for Italian horror month, what are you guys watching? Leave it in the comments on the YouTube channel. Yeah, man. What are you guys watching out there? Let us know. So, Anyways, um, that is, yeah, going to conclude the episode. I don't have anything else, so I'm hungry. I need to go eat. I'm hungry, too. I'm thinking pizza. Pizza. I, I got a I frozen pizza I skipped, yesterday I, for this uh, occasion. I skipped uh, Pizza Friday, so. You use that pizza on pizza Fridays? Sunday. If I do have pizza, it's usually Fridays because it's mm. Pizza Friday. Pizza Friday, yeah. We have Jersey Mike Thursdays. Nice. I I like some Jersey Mikes. We love Jersey Mikes. I have always wanted to try Jersey Mikes, man. We're actually we actually just got there. We had so where I work, like I have one near me, not super close, but I have one near me. But then where I work, there's one, but it was like further away. Um, but they're just putting one in near my work, so probably get that from time to time. Yeah, it always looks so good when I pe when I see people doing these Jersey Mike eats on on youtube and shit i'm like oh fuck, that looks great man it just yeah. like puts every subway or sub place to fucking shame it looks like man i, I, I mean i'm else? a big fan of jimmy john's mm -hmm. we don't have Personally. those around here even like jersey mike's is like very like few and far between whatever. yeah well they're, it's not that it, it's more of like it is like an east coast thing right like jersey mike's it's, it's an east coast thing but it i mean jersey really, like, yeah <laughs> yeah it's like more like that area, like the Jersey, like Pennsylvania, like New York area. Like it hasn't fully expanded to like right. all of right. New England. Right, mm. right. Yeah, it's like a lot of fast food restaurants where they're kind of like segregated to like certain areas of the states and shit. It's it's. I've it's never even me. seen a Quiznos in my entire life. Quiznos oh, so. is like that's not even <laughs> existing around here. We had them like years ago, and they we, all like shut down around here, and it was have, actually like, insane. Yeah, we have like five or six in the town or in the city I live in. It's crazy. But I, I, mean, I loved Quiznos when I was here. Yeah, it's just really expensive for what you like. They totally made their their sandwiches like smaller and shit, and the price just like doubled. Wow. It's crazy. It's been gone what, like ten years here now. So what, like what, what do you guys? The same. What do you guys like sandwich wise? Whenever I go to Jersey Mike's, I always just get like it just um like ham, turkey, and bacon with like just Mike's way. Mm. I always get that there. Like I, I like, like it. I like Cap I don't Cola mess with it. a lot. Yeah, Cap I like Cola's that too. Really but like, I just like I like this sandwich so much when I go there. Like, I don't even want to deviate from it because I know like all the Italian sandwiches there. Like, they don't put mayo on it, and like even if like that's the right way to do it, like it just does not work for me. <laughs> yeah, it gets a little bit drier without the mayo. Yeah, right? I, and I've tried like that. You do like the oil like, and vinegar though, right? Yeah, I always put that on yeah. it, but it's like something about the mayo to like just like cut it and tie it together. And I always like, okay, so I go to this place every Thursday because I go to like an event like in the city 20 minutes away that has a Jersey Mike. So that's like why I do it on Thursdays. And I always have to show up though, like 15 minutes before it close. So it's a lot easier for them if I just order like two of the same sandwiches and leave. And mm. like, I kind of would feel like a dick if I was like 15 minutes before rules. I'd be like, yeah, make me a cheesesteak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I, I tend to enjoy cold 
cuts more than hot sandwiches. Yeah, mm. I prefer those anyway. I tried their cheesesteak there once, and it's just like when you like had like the even like the tourist trap cheesesteaks like in Philly, and then that area, it's just like everything else is whatever. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I. I well, I think that like most cheesesteaks that you get places, I don't think they're good. Like, I you got to do cheese whiz if you're doing cheesesteaks. Yeah. You know? And like, like, I never like thought that until like I had like real cheesesteak like in the Philly area. Like, yeah. Like, I love place. provolone and mozzarella as much as the next guy, but like, if we're doing cheesesteaks, I want cheese whiz. Oh right. man, do yeah. both, man. Provolone and the cheese whiz, man. I'm down with that too. That's the way it goes. That love too. That's actually the way we make them, man. We do it like with both. It's, it's got to have the onions too. Yeah. 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 Got to have the onions. I love cheesesteaks though, man. They're good. <laughs> Fucking cheesesteaks are bomb, bro. <laughs> oh. Yeah, dude. So yummy. All right. I'm hungry. Yeah. I'm like yeah. super hungry. That, that definitely helped steak. that. Now I want a cheesesteak. <laughs> All I have is a frozen pizza legit man all right guys yeah we're out of here man check you guys next week in week three which is what is week three again fucking forget oh yeah the poopy. laughing windows guy yeah, yeah the, the 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 poopy guy yeah I'm, I'm hyped to watch laughing windows that's like probably the biggest one i haven't seen poopy avate poopy avate yeah so the house with the laughing windows revenge of the dead and the arcane sorcerer yep. which sounds like a fucking sounds like a fantasy <laughs> sci-fi movie man that sounds like something that like full moon would have put out in 1995. It well, actually sounds like an anime. It's from 96. Or, 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 I mean, it so. sounds like an animated. <laughs> is it just, really? I assumed yeah. it was like 80s. No, yeah, it's 90, 90, 1996, it, dude. It sounds like, to be honest, it, to me, it sounds like it's an animated movie. Like That'd Arcane cool. Sorcerer. It just That'd sounds like really that. really cool. I'd be so down for like an animated Italian horror movie. Yeah, because every time I think of that, I always think of Knife and Ice. I'm like, this is weird. But, I don't think I mean, I've ever seen an Italian animated movie, honestly. I wonder if they even have any. I've seen like some French ones. I've seen. Some, what was uh, that uh, one movie Czech that ones? we watched um, that had the cat? It was like a Giallo cat movie. Oh, dude, that movie's so good. What was. Uh, Meryl what country was that violent? Uh, it was France. It was, it was a French uh, movie. Yeah. Yeah, that movie is fucking violent too, man. It's, it's got some. Oh, I loved commentary. it. It was so. It, I think it made. Did it make my top 10 of that year? Oh, I don't remember, but it was a good. It's a. Man, that movie it just i feel like vinegar syndrome needs to get the rights to that and put that shit out man severing kids <laughs> yeah well it's not even a, it's not a kid yeah, it's so it's totally adult it's man. It's, that's, yeah, that's a hard some r pretty, some pretty dark animated movies yeah that's a that's a hard r i mean fritz the cat's like one of my favorites ever so have you yeah. seen some of like those like japanese who like 70s I, animated movies? uh i mean we've seen some anime yeah oh, man. like uh there's, Angel some, real, and there's the some real dark yeah oh like, yeah there's some real yeah, nasty eh? shit man yeah all right so yeah so poopy avati next week uh probably have a guest on so yeah i get oh shit it's first timer too so it's gonna be a five questioner man five questions Ooh. add a half hour to the show yeah there you go man so probably no <laughs> it'll be no top 46 list or 27 or whatever so it'll be top five questions just an interrogation yeah yeah pretty much all right guys we're out of here check you next week deuces deuces that's all folks